Today, you're going to see one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the National Football League. Number 10, Jim Zorn of the Seattle Seahawks. He scrambled last week against Oakland and hit his favorite target, Steve Largent, for the 67-yard strike against the Oakland Raiders. Largent last year led the NFL in receiving yardage. And today, in the King Dome in Seattle, the Seahawks with a 4-4 four and four record playing host to the Philadelphia Eagles, who have the best record in the National Football League. They are 7-1. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with John Madden. And, John, I didn't think I was going to get you in this place. No, I never liked this place. I never believed that football should be played indoors, especially here in the kingdom. You know why? Never won a football game here. And one of the big reasons, John, is Jim Zorn. Oh, he was tough. You know, he can run. He can throw it. He's a threat. Every time he gets a ball, when we played him, we always assign one man to Jim Zorn on every play. Now, he faces the number one ranked defense in the National Football League. We ask him how he will attack that. What are you going to try to do? Well, I think that uh, our type of offense has been real creative. I think we've got a lot of uh, uh, ingenuity in, in a lot of the people that are playing with us. Myself, uh, Steve Largent, uh, we run weird plays, and you'll, you'll see a few of them today. Wilbert Montgomery's out for the third straight week. Wally Henry is out for the year, but Ron Jaworski will play. And before the start of the game, John asked him just how he feels after last week. Well, I feel a lot better than I did uh, Sunday and Monday, but uh, of course, uh, when you spend the night in the hospital after taking uh, the kind of blindside shot I took, uh, you don't expect to feel well for a few days, but uh, I'll be ready to go this afternoon. Ron, how are you going to attack the Seattle defense? Well, the Seattle defense uh, is a strong defense. Uh, they're the type of defense that, that bends, but they don't give up uh, the real big play. They can, uh, they can give up yardage, but they don't give up many points. So it, it's going to be the type of game where we know where they're going to be. They play a pretty straight defense, or we call vanilla, where they just line up and say, here we are, and come and get us. And it's going to be a game that I believe is really going to be one of the pits. I think if we establish a running game and maintain ball control, we'll win the football game. Seattle defensively has been pretty tough. They've given up only 10 touchdowns in the last five games. And Seattle has won the toss they have elected to receive. This is Tony Franklin, who will be kicking off. Franklin this year has hit 6 of 12 field goals. He's seventh in the NFC in scoring. As back deep goes Will Lewis, one of the exciting young rookies for this football team this year. He is second in the AFC in kickoff returns, and instead, we have a new man bringing it out. This is going to be Jesse Green, and Green out to the 17-yard line. Green, a former Green Bay Packer, and at the 17, that's where Seattle will set it up after a 15-yard return. Zach Henderson making the stop. Let's look now offensively at the Seattle team. Zorn, just spectacular, but they really miss Sherman Smith at running back. They do miss Sherman Smith because he was not only a fine runner, but a fine pass receiver and an additional threat on this Seattle team. A young offensive line. John Yarno might be the best up front for this team. Here comes Zorn. Zorn coming into this contest is ranked seventh in the AFC in the passing statistics. In motion goes Steve Largent. This is an exciting young team, the Seattle team. This is Jim Jodak, the former Los Angeles Ram. He picks up five yards to the 22-yard line. Joe Dad is the man they picked up in August for a draft choice. And earlier this year, he had 117 yards against the Washington Redskins. But one thing about this team, they don't have the great outside speed with Odat and Don Dornick in that backfield. That's what they missed. But one thing, Jim Zorn adds to that because he can run with the ball inside or outside. Second down five from the 22-yard line. This will be Dornick, Dan Dornick, the former New York Giant. He may have gotten two yards, and that's all. It'll bring up third down. Still three yards to go. Frank LaMaster making the stop for the Eagles, who we mentioned are the number one ranked defense, not only in the NFC, but the entire National Football League. And let's look at this defensive core. They have just been spectacular at times. They have. We see the front three there. And in addition to that group, Claude Humphrey, number 87, comes in as a pass rusher. And he is tough in those situations. Their number one draft pick, Roynell Young, at that left corner. And on this particular play, Seattle's coming out with three wide receivers. We'll see that through most of the game. Third down, a long three to go. Almost jumping offside, Philadelphia. Zorn on third down, giving to Dornick. He has a first down. Dan Dornick to the 31-yard line. Dornick last year caught 54 passes for the Seattle team. Jerry Robinson over to make the stop after an eight-yard pickup on the play, moving the ball to the 31-yard line. And early now, Seattle showing they might be able to run the football. A very interesting call in that situation. On any passing down, the 
Philadelphia Eagles substitute four new players, take out four, and that's their pass defense. Now, Seattle elected, instead of passing into that defense, they elected to run, and they were very successful in the first play. And they had the three wide receivers and still ran the football. Very interesting development early in the game. March it in motion. The tight end is back in on this play. John Sawyer. Zorn gives off to Jodat, and Jodat to the 35-yard line. That will be a pickup of three, almost four yards on the play. Jodat establishing early that he may be a very effective player in this game. This year, Philadelphia has allowed only 95.5 yards a game on the ground. When they play inside up here is totally different from any other place. Second down and six for Seattle. Largent in motion once again. He has 28 catches this year. He now has 29. Coming over very quickly, Roynell Young. The young man we mentioned earlier, the number one draft pick from Alcorn State, who has one interception this year. And Largent, who has the great hands, coming up with a catch. We see again the one thing that Seattle likes to do is mix up the formations. They like to bring someone in motion as they did here to Largent. It was just a short pass to establish maybe how how they're going to cover the motion. As we see Largent come here, and then we know on the defense that that the Eagle defense slid with him, came over with him. So they'll check that early to see what they want to do off of that. And now on a third down and three, they have three wide receivers in the game again. McCollum goes in motion. Zorn, same play almost as earlier on third down, and Dornick may be short this time. Almost very similar to that play they called earlier on third down. This time, LeMaster and Jerry Robinson over to stop him. It appears they are short. It's going to bring up a fourth down. And I think they're going to go for it. You know, that's one thing about Jack Patera. He doesn't play by the book. He doesn't play those percentages. He's an exciting coach with an exciting football team. And here early in the game, they're going for it on fourth down. They call this the most exciting fourth down club in football, and we may find evidence of that as this game wears on. And we come to this fourth down. They have less than a yard to go. It's a matter of inches on fourth down. Everybody's in tight. Zorn to Joe Dad, and I believe he got it. it wasn't easy, but Joe Dad hit by Dennis Harrison, the left side defensive tackle for Philadelphia, and the first gamble of the day has paid off for Seattle. It sure has, and that was a fine job on the right side of the Seahawk line with Bob Newton, the right guard, Steve August, the right tackle, and the tight end, John Sawyer. We can see here that they take off very well when the ball snapped. They don't allow any penetration on the line of scrimmage so that Joe Dat is able to get in and pick up the first down. Seattle has not won at home this year. They are four and four, but one of the reasons they haven't won at home is a very, very difficult schedule. They are rated to have the toughest schedule in the National Football League this year. First down just across the 42. Zorn to Dornick. Dornick across the 45 to the 47. A pickup of four yards on the play, and I'm impressed right now the way Seattle's running the football. I've seen this happen before, and I know exactly what, what Jim Zorn is doing or the Seattle offense. They're running straight at the Philadelphia defense to make them stay there. And now later, he can start his sprinting and his scrambling and be much more effective. If he starts it early in the game, then they start spreading out with him. But he wants to eat him up, make him stay there. Does this bring back some memories? Oh, I've been there before. <laughs> and it has never been fun. Second down and six. Zorn with lots of time to throw. And he tried to hit his tight end of the 50-yard line. Check that. Dornick, his back coming out of the backfield. A lot of mustard on that football. Boy, he really fired that one over there, and it's going to bring up a third down. John Bunting, who's considered to be the nerve center of that defense, over to covering on the play. And there's an interesting statistic. Only four of its last 24 third downs, and that's what we have now, third and six. Well, and there's been a lot of talk about the pass protection up here in Seattle. They feel that, that one place that they really haven't improved and haven't done a good job is the offensive line pass protecting on obvious passing down. Well, they've given up 21 sacks this year. Well, last year they gave up 23 for the entire year. Zorn on third and six. Pressure put on by Claude Humphrey. Gets it off to Dornick to the 50. And Dornick has a first down. He's to the 46-yard line of Philadelphia. Roynell Young over to make the stop. And this play will show you how nifty Jim Zorn is on the pass rush up the middle. I'll tell you, he's very tough to catch. As we see in the upper 
part of the screen. Claude Humphrey takes an inside move, beats his man. Now Zorn has to buy a little time. He has to move. Then he gets the ball out to Dornick on a screen pass for a first down. You see Yarno throw that block. That big center got down there very effectively. That was a different type of screen. Usually you have your guard out in front on the screen. In this play, it was center John Yarno. First down now at the 46 of Philadelphia. We're just underway in the kingdom. A $67 million structure. Three wide receivers in on this first down. Zorn, far side. He has his man. That is Steve Rabel. Rabel this year has only caught three passes, but now that they've gone to three wide receivers, you're going to see a lot more action. You'll play a lot more, and that's what Jim Zorn was starting to establish. He wanted to run inside, make him stay there. It's controlled that pass rush because he's been running on first down. Now he goes three wide receivers on first down and throws a first down pass. You can never really get a defensive book on this Seattle team. You know, Rabel, we watched practice yesterday. He had a little trouble with ankle, and they oh, were afraid he wasn't playing today. It went very quiet in this stadium, didn't it? He Oof. turned it yesterday, but he looks like he's healthy and ready to go. First down, just short of the 35-yard line. Jodat cuts it back very well, and Jodat is close to the 31-yard line, giving four yards on the play. Bring up second and six, John Bunning again, making the stop along with Charlie Johnson. And we knew, and I'm sure most people watching this game knew, that Seattle will throw everything at you, and they have a very varied and a very interesting offense, and it started that way here today. Well, that's what Jim Zorn said before the game. He says, we do a lot of weird things. I don't think we've seen their weirdest yet. I think <laughs> as we go, we're going to see some more weird things as we look at the three wide receivers. Good that's shot. Good shot from the end zone. It's Joe Dapp now on a second down and six. Is able to take it to the 27 yard line. He's going to be two yards short of the first down. Charlie Johnson again making the stop. Johnson, one of the unsung football players in this Philadelphia success story. As now change is coming in. Mark Bell, a big tight end, has come in. Ron Essing, who will come in sometimes as a tight end as well as play offensive tackle. And I'm sure that he's coming in in this situation as the tight end. Thus far, Joe Dad has carried the ball six times for 24 yards. He has a third down and a short two. And look at this one. Pittsburgh had to struggle to break that three-game losing streak. Green Bay is something. I wouldn't be surprised if Seattle runs a play pass here. And here is Zorn giving off to Joe Dad, and I don't believe he got it. Carl Harrison, who according to Coach Dick Vermeil, is an all-pro. He says he plays as well as anyone from sideline to sideline. You see Zorn. Not too happy about that development as that will bring up fourth down and also bring in Efren Herrera. See again we see on this one they allowed penetration on the left side on their first short yardage defense the the right side did a good job they didn't let the defense penetrate on this time they ran to the left side they did allow penetration in fact it was by Carl Harrison and that stopped the play 44 yard field goal attempt Herrera is 11 of 15 his longest this year has been 48 yards. So a 44-yarder is Jim Zorn to hold. They're faking it. Zorn is going to run it. He's to the 20, 15. He is down to the six-yard line. And that is part of the changes that you'll see throughout this football game as they cross up Philadelphia. It's first and goal at the six. Randy Logan eventually made the stop after a 20-yard pickup. That's one thing. And look on this play who the lead blocker is. Herrera, he fakes the kick. Now he leads right here. He leads Jim Zorn up through the hole. He really doesn't block anyone, but he gets in the way, and right at the end he tries to, and that's what we're talking about the book. There's no such thing as having a defensive book on this Seattle team or a kicking team book because they do so many things out of those situations. There's always a surprise up their sleeve. Efren, a Harold leading interference. Can you believe that? First and goal at the six. A sellout crowd today. The 24th straight sellout. And this time, Joe Dat on a first and goal at the six, struggling inside the five. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. He's going to be at about the four yard line area. Jim Zorn has done so many things. They've had Herrera catch passes off of fakes. They've had Herrera throw passes, and this time he was leading the block. He was a leading blocker, and the reason he says that he's a blocker now is he said every time he goes to kick, they double cover him. <laughs> so they can't throw to him anymore, so now they made him a blocker. Next week, he'll probably be working out with the guards. He's an interesting guy. He was recruited by Dick Vermeil at UCLA. Second and goal now. They mark the ball just about the 30-yard line area. Zorn wants to throw. Has a lot of time. And it's intended for Dornick. 
Dan Dornick had double coverage right on the goal line area. Frank LeMaster, Bill Berkey was also in on that play, and it comes to a third down. They really had that one defense very well. They did. They had it inside out. Dan Dornick thought that he was touched before they, before the ball get, got there. We'll be able to see it here as we look at it again to see if, in fact, he was. But it was really good defense. They had him inside out. There was nothing there. Jim Zorn forced that one a little, Gary. You know, you said at the top of the show, you always assigned one guy to Jim Zorn. Dick Vermeil said what? He was going to sign 11 men to him. He said last night they had a meeting, and instead of assigning one guy to him, that they were going to sign 11 of their defensive players to Jim Zorn. Seattle has asked for a timeout, as we have 5-21 remaining in this first quarter. Well, the New York Giants now have lost eight in a row. Tampa Bay with a 30 to 13 victory. And we have another look here. And Atlanta, boy, are they playing well. They beat Buffalo. They want to stay in first place in that NFC West. They're an impressive team. You know, we've talked many times about Atlanta. We had them against the New England Patriots, and I think they were one of the best teams that day that we've seen in the NFL. Boy, Detroit, that was a tough one. San had Francisco. A, Detroit had to come from behind to do that. James Owens in that game at a 101 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Here we go. Third and goal at the three yard line. This is the 17th play on this drive. A drive that started at the 17 yard line. Zorn on a bootleg. Uh, has a block from Lynch. Or Lynch was trying to throw one and couldn't. And he gets nowhere. Trying to throw a block was Tom Lynch, 61. He couldn't get it done. As an end result, Zorn didn't gain anything. This is a big play for the Seahawks. They always do this. It's a bootleg. See, he fakes the run to the left, then he keeps the ball, brings it out with a guard pulling to the right or left. Now, the, the defense of the Philadelphia Eagles did a nice job because they didn't go with the two running backs. They waited there for Zorn to come to that side. Boy, now Young made the tackle, but give credit to Charlie Johnson on that play. So this is going to be... A 12-yard field goal to check it, a 22-yard field goal attempt by Efren Herrera. Zorn to hold. I guess you're going to kick it. They didn't last time, and he hits it. Efren Herrera now has hit 12 of 16 this year. And Seattle, a very impressive drive. It's now 440 showing on the clock, and Philadelphia is getting the football for the first time in this game. Efren Herrera, who just kicked a 21-yard field goal to kick off the deep men back Billy Campfield. He's joined by Perry Harrington. Harrington is number 35. Herrera, an outstanding soccer kicker in college as well as a fine kicker now in the NFL, but that one's going to go out of bounds, and that will be a five-yard penalty. We came out to practice yesterday, and Herrera was warming up with a soccer ball. And pushing and shoving going on down there, and there is Herrera. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. But Herrera used that soccer ball to kind of loosen up. And look at that last drive. Can you believe that? 10 minutes and 12 seconds they had that football? That's something. I'll tell you one thing. That establishes something. And it's a good way to start. And even though they only came up with three points, they have established to themselves and to the Eagles that they can both run and throw the ball, and they can also fool them if they have to. Fool them, I guess. I can see why you had some miserable Sunday afternoons here. Oh, it drives you crazy. And then you're never sure that he's going to kick the ball now. As we watch the Eagles, they have six men up in the front line. They're always waiting for an onside kick. Last year, Seattle hit 7 of 11 onside kicks. That might be an NFL record, but he is going to kick off. And Billy Campfield will camp under this one at the six yard line. Up to the 20, has a little running room to the 30. He had a little alley there, he was tripped up. Coming over to trip him up was Michael Jackson, who's the leading tackler on this team, and Jackson's holding his hand, shaking up a little bit on the play. But Philadelphia holding. now with the ball for the first time. Right, Jackson was holding his hand because he took on that wedge by himself. Now look at this offensive line. The wide receivers, the running backs. Here's Jaworski, Giamona for Montgomery. There's the offensive line. Woody Peoples, a 37-year-old young guy who's just done quite a job. Right in the two all-pro tackles. Sizemore is coming back from a concussion. This team really took a physical beating last week against Chicago. Giamona has a crunched body, is the way they described him, but he's in there starting. And this will be a fake to Giamona. Jaworski, Charlie Smith. 
Boy, what a catch by Smith. That will move it to the 41 yard line of Seattle. John Harris defending on the play and Ron Jaworski comes out on the first play and starts their offense rolling. He did. He was going to show a little the same thing that Zorin does and it was a great fake. They faked to the weak side to the right brought Charlie Smith on an in pattern from the left side. He really had the whole field there bobbled the ball a little but a big play 28 yard pickup. Dave Brown was the guy that got a hand on that football. First down for Philadelphia. Charlie Smith coming up with his 18th catch. He had 24 all of last year, so he's off to an outstanding start. Here's Leroy Harris. Harris to the 37 and spun around. Keith Simpson, who is one of the fine young safeties in the league, up to make the stop after a four-yard pickup. Simpson was a number one draft pick in 78 for Seattle. They think he's a future pro bowler. There he is, 42, and let's look at this defense, a defense that has bent a little bit but hasn't broken. One of the impressive players on that is your left end number 69, Jacob Green, a rookie, and that'll be an interesting matchup between he and Jerry Sizemore. Ron Jaworski now with a second down and six from the 27-yard line. They trail 3-0. 21-yard field goal by Efren Herrera. An end around reverse is faked by Giamona. He keeps the football and he's in trouble. He throws it now to Jaworski. Jaworski gets on the football at the 49. Philadelphia trying to take a page out of Seattle's playbook. That just didn't work at all. It didn't work at all, but it was supposed to be a, a pass because Harold Carmichael on this play is deep in the end zone. See, Jamon is going to bring it out here. Then it looks like he was supposed to somehow get it back to Jaworski. Now, if Jaworski is expecting that play, then it's good. If he's not, he really doesn't want it. I question he was expecting that. Well, it, it was some pass, though, because Harold Carmichael did run a pass pattern, and he was deep in the end zone. Now, whether Giamona was supposed to throw it to him or Jaworski was going to get it back and throw it to him, we don't know. You can see now the yardage they lost on that play all the way back to the 49-yard line. Jaworski back. Protection is there. A flag on the play. And intended for Billy Campfield at the 41, but he couldn't hang on to it. He had a lot of time to throw, but I want to tell you something. That secondary of Seattle really covered that play very well. They had five defensive backs in. There was really no one open. He had to come off to his short man, Campfield. He, as we watch it again, the penalty is against the Eagles. It's an illegal uh, motion. And we see Jaworski here. He was looking deep. He really didn't mean to throw to Campfield. That was a secondary receiver that he came foul. off to. Offense, there was no man on the end of the line. Declined. Fourth down. What happened is, is they didn't have on the weak side the wide receiver. Instead of being on the line, he lined up in the backfield, which uh, uh, was too many men in the backfield. You have to have what seven men on the line of scrimmage. And this is the deep man, Will Lewis. He's an exciting young man from Millersville State in Pennsylvania. He was a Philadelphia Eagle fan as a boy, and now playing against Philadelphia. Block, block by Kerry Justin, falling on the ball is Philadelphia but Seattle will have it at the 46 yard line you know, they had one of these two weeks ago to win a game they had to have a block punt by Sam McCollum we see here it just Kerry Justin just came from the outside no one touched him and he did a nice job of getting in front of the kicker in a legal block and so Seattle has things going their way they have the ball at the Philadelphia 47 yard line Let's reconstruct this block punt just a moment ago. I think that the Eagles were spread out on the right side. They had their end men spread. Kerry Justin came from the outside. There was no blocker there, and it was a and it was a fine play. He really got right in front of the punter. Jeff Moore and Lawrence McCutcheon, the new running backs now for Seattle. First down at the 47 of Philadelphia. The Seahawks with a three to nothing lead. Zorn to throw on first down. He's going deep to Steve Largent. He's behind the man, but the ball is thrown wide left to him. Dropping back quickly was Roynell Young. And also in on that particular play, Bernard Wilson. Largent had the man beat, but the ball was thrown wide left. And look at this. Baltimore has ended Kansas City's four-game winning streak. And that's after losing to St. Louis. Hard to figure, isn't it? Well, they had a lot of sacks last week. I bet they straighten that out. San Diego beat Cincinnati, so the Chargers kind of stopping off momentary skid Cincinnati playing a murderous schedule this year 
And so it's second down now and 10 from the 47. But again, Zorn kind of airing it out. And if I was Dick Vermeil, I'd be a little nervous right now. <laughs> 153 remaining in this first quarter, and Seattle's had the football most of the time. Quick pitch. Trying to go wide, Jeff Moore. A flag on the play, and Moore the short of the 45-yard line. Moore was their 12th round draft pick a year ago out of Jackson State. For an L. Young over to make the stop, but let's see what the penalty's all about. Looks like it's going against Seattle. And it's probably offensive holding. Nope. Illegal procedure. Usually a lot of time on those sweeps, uh, the offensive line has to, to get outside to get position. So what they'll do is they'll reach an arm out to help them get that position. You see a lot of holding on running plays, especially to the motion, outside. Number 81, offense, decline, third down. Here's Jeff Moore. He's shaking up on that last play. Looks like he hurt his shoulder. There's Patera. He's in his fifth year, as is Dick Vermeil. Both of them came in the league at the same time. And this young man has directed his team one game short of the playoffs the last two seasons. With John Madden, I'm Gary Bender. We have a minute 46 remaining in this first quarter. Seattle has a third down nine. They lead this game three to nothing. And on third down versions, they're four for seven. And if nothing else has happened in this first quarter, I think Seattle has gotten Philadelphia's attention. One thing, they haven't let Philadelphia get started yet. They've really kept them off balance. Well, that first drive took over 10 minutes. It's hard to get the football and get on balance. Back to throw, Jim Zorn on third and nine. A time pass to Largent. He made the catch. That was a tough catch to make. Largent out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And that is one of the toughest catches to make in football. It's a tough catch, and it was a tough throw. It was a timing thing, but Zorn and Largent work an awful lot together. They're just like brothers, and that's the place that you want that ball. It's a tough catch, but that's what the receivers are paid to do. That's, those are the types of catches that they have to make because it really can't be defended. It was not only over the head, but it was also over the outside shoulder. 24-yard pickup to the 22-yard line. Boy, Largent last year leading the NFL in receiving yardage spectacular season two years ago he caught 71 passes Zorn on a first down gives off to Lawrence McCutcheon he was the man who joined his team last week after being cut by the Denver Broncos he carried one time last week for a touchdown and look at this one St. Louis is leading Dallas in the third quarter St. Louis is surprising everyone LA trying to keep New Orleans from winning their first game of the year New Orleans really struggling and Denver leading Houston six to nothing Earl Campbell would like to become the first back ever to gain 200 yards in three consecutive games. And Oakland, boy, they're playing well. They're playing very well. And New England leading the Jets, who, of course, coming off of that win on Monday night. Second down now, nine yards to go for Seattle from the 21 of Philadelphia. Zorn with his 3 to nothing lead with time to throw. Now Humphrey is giving him a little pressure. Got rid of it. Claude Humphrey, who leads his team in sacks with five, you said something about Humphrey. He could really be important against the Seattle team today. Well, he, he will be because he's their designated pass rusher. He comes in in the long yardage situations with the, with the four linemen. And that's one thing that you have to do to Zorn. No matter what he does to you, when he's running or faking or sprinting, you still have to keep the pressure on him. And if he runs and scrambles, you have to come back and do it again the next time. You can't become cautious against this team. You saw that score, Minnesota leading Washington. Redskins with a two-game winning streak. Here we go, third down nine. Three wide receivers are in on this particular play. Rabel's at the bottom, McCollum and Largent at the top of the screen. That's McCollum in the slot. And now timeout. You heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Zorn doesn't like that one now. They've already used two timeouts here in this first quarter. Yeah, and you hate to do that. You like to save your timeouts for the end of the half and the end of the game so that you have them in bunches of three. I'm sure that they had a play. Now, it was third down, and Jim Zorn didn't feel that the play would be successful. So rather than run the play anyway on third down, he thought I'd better take the timeout. I'll tell the officials. I'll go over and talk to the coaches and see what we really want to do in this situation. That is final now. Atlanta 6-3 and three on the year. And Pittsburgh defeating Green Bay. Steelers are very much alive yet. Boy, the Packers have played tough. And Tampa Bay over the Giants 30-13. to 13. That's a lot of points for Tampa Bay, isn't it? They were figuring that might be a defensive struggle. Ray Perkins thought they could win it with a defense at Detroit. 
They're still hanging on to that lead in that NFC Central. Baltimore over Kansas City, and Kansas City now, after winning four in a row, losing to the Colts. San Diego over Cincinnati, and San Diego, I'll tell you, Don Coriel has them going again. I guess Chuck Muncie, though, didn't play today. They didn't take him on the plane. Oh, he didn't, but Dan Faust played. That's threw enough. a whole bunch of touchdowns. Well, Zorn is back in. After using his second timeout, we still have 52 seconds to go in this first quarter of play. This wouldn't be a bad situation for a weird play. <laughs> what do you categorize as weird? Well, we'll watch it. Maybe that's what Zorn wanted. Maybe he didn't have a weird one. He said, I want a weird one. Timeout. <laughs> he had two seconds on that 30-second clock before called the timeout. Here is Zorn, and that's kind of a weird one, to the 15, and he slides, but he didn't get the first down. I think he misjudged where that first down stick is. John Shira came up to make the stop. <laughs> he went into that little hook slide. I'm sure and this is an organized run. See, this is a quarterback draw. They block it. They invite the pass rush up the field. Zorn starts back, and then he goes into the run. Now, I think you're right. I think he did misjudge that because he looked like he felt that had, if he would go into a slide, he would get the first down. But, of course, he's two yards short. And Herrera will attempt another field goal. This will be 32 yards. We say we think he's going to attempt it. With this team, you never know. Herrera already with a 21-yarder. This will be from 32. Zorn holding. Herrera's kick is on the way. And Seattle has taken a 6 to nothing lead. Herrera, against his former college coach, Dick Vermeil, is giving him a difficult time. And Seattle has had the football almost this entire first quarter with only four seconds remaining on it with a 6 to nothing lead. As we see Jack Patero over there, I know what he's thinking. He's thinking all that work, all that offense, all that ball control, and we only have six points. I think that right now is an advantage to the Philadelphia Eagles. As we said earlier, they haven't gotten started yet, but even though they haven't gotten started, they're only down six to nothing, which with this team and this great offense that the Eagles have is really nothing. You saw that score just a moment ago. Dallas now has taken the lead over St. Louis, that game being played in St. Louis, as Herrera will kick off from the 35-yard line. Seattle last year was nine and seven. They were nine and seven the year before, and both times falling just a game short of making the playoffs. They're in a division in which every team is at 500 or better, showing you how tough this AFC West is. As you have Campfield back deep along with Harrington. Herrera ready to go. He's been a busy man throwing blocks and kicking field goals. Oh, kicking blocking uh, he probably wants to catch a pass he may before this one's over Billy Campfield will take this one inside the five yard line 15 20 and he'll make it out to the 23 yard line making a stop was Don Dufek who was activated for this game and so that's the end of the first quarter here in the Kingdom in Seattle with the Seattle Seahawks trying to move above the 500 mark leading it six to nothing fell on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Ford Trucks, the trucks built Ford tough and built for fuel economy. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Well, Philadelphia just didn't have the football in that first quarter. Look at that. And the total yardage 111 yards for Seattle, only 21 for Philadelphia after the first 15 minutes of play. So Ron Jaworski will try to get this offense on track. And they have nobody set behind him on this play. Now jumping back will be Campfielders in the backfield along with Leroy Harris. Campfield is healthy, and he's going to see some playing time today. Here he comes, the former Kansas back, and he makes it to the 25-yard line, and that's all. Jacob Green, their number one draft pick out of Cis A&M, the 10th taken this year, making the stop. I'll tell you, and he did the play here because there was, he penetrated. You see he on Jerry Sizemore there, he's into the backfield, so there's no place to Camfield, there's no place for Camfield to cut as he gets to the line. That's what Ron Jaworski was saying before the game. He said it has to be one in the trenches. On that play, the Philadelphia Eagles did not win it in the trenches, they were whipped in the trench. Jack Patera looking on as Jaworski on a second and seven. And almost intercepted that time by Joe Norman, number 52. He's the second-year man from Indiana. They will bring him in on passing situations, bring in a fifth back, and bring Norman in as he plays pass defense so well. 
He does, and as we see him here, he just drops back. It was a zone-type coverage. He didn't have a man. He was on that hash mark. He dropped straight back, and he was in great position for the interception. He's upset with himself because he thought he could have had an interception and maybe even a score. Look at those offensive plays, 24 to 6. You were mentioning the linebacker dropping the ball. Dick Vermeil told us he doesn't even let his linebackers tape their hands anymore because they can't intercept. Well, he said he'd rather have them wear gloves than tape. Third down and seven now. Five defensive backs are in for Seattle on this play. Jaworski back. And Campfield, the intended receiver, and that was Joe Norman defending again on the play. And right now, Philadelphia offensively just not looking too organized. Usually in this situation, Philadelphia would like to go to three wide receivers. They lost Scott Fitzky, they lost Wally Henry. So now they really don't have the three wide receivers. What they did on that play is they put Billy Camfield up as a wing, and he ran the pattern as a third wide receiver would in that situation normally. Now, Runniger had his first punt block today as he stands back at the 11-yard line. They're spreading it out again, the, aren't they? The as same as way, and that's how they had the first one block. And Will Lewis, you saw him, number 41, averaging 7-3, a punt return. Now, Philadelphia jumps back in with their people that were set wide. That's what they didn't do the first time. And Runniger will have time to kick. Will Lewis calling for the fair catch, and he has a football at the 37-yard line. And so Seattle has it with a six to nothing lead. That was a 38 yard kick that time by Max Runniger. I tell you, these punters love to kick indoors, but they don't like to get them blocked indoors or outdoors, which of course happened to Runniger earlier today. Here's another Radio Shack telephone sensation. Well, my broadcasting sidekick, John Madden, became an uncle about a week ago. It's Molly Madden Magruder, a new resident here in Seattle. Your sister had a baby. Right, and it was quite a thrill. We came up Friday night, and I got to see Molly Madden. Surprised to see her name on television, though. <laughs> First down for Seattle, Lawrence McCutcheon. He's going to throw it back to Zorn. And here comes another new wrinkle as Zorn is out to the 40, and he'll go out of bounds at the 42. And Philadelphia has to be scratching their head. They're probably wondering what next. Jerry Robinson, however, reacted very well on that play and kept from being a big, big gainer. This is real good weird, real good weird, where he starts out to the right, he's going to run, he stops, he throws back to Zorn. Now, Zorn has an option here. He has a lineman in front of him for a screen to run, or he did have a receiver downfield. He decides to run. I'm sure he yelled, go, and then that became a screen pass to Zorn. Now, how would you call that? Run right, throw back left, screen left option pass <laughs> gonna get a delay of game trying to call all of that a gain of six yards second down four and as far as Zorn has carried the ball three times for 33 yards and none of them have been ordinary plays oh what a hit on Joe Dad. Joe Dad just didn't find any running room that time and that's one area now Philadelphia may take away from the Seattle team after earlier seeing the Seahawks be very effective up the middle Charlie Johnson the nose tackle led that charge Charlie Johnson, as he goes back to the huddle, he's probably saying, geez, it's fun to see a normal play, the old basic football where you run the running back inside at the line and you can get down in the pits and you and you block and, and hit each other and bump around and then you make the play. There's Los Angeles now bumping their lead up to 17 zip as Philadelphia now has five defensive backs in on a third down and four. And also three wide receivers for Seattle. Zorn on the move intended for Joe Dat. A flag has been thrown back inside the 40 yard line as Dan Dornick is down there along with one of the linebackers, Jerry Robinson, where that flag has been thrown. He's down, and I'm sure that Dornick is the is the guilty one. Probably a holding penalty. Probably hooked his arm around him as he went to block him. They tend to do that. Of course, they won't take the penalty anyway. Jerry Mark Wright. The man in charge of this football game as back to kick for the first time will be Herman Weaver. Weaver is 12th in the AFC with an average of 41.6. He led the NFC in punting in 1975 while playing for the Detroit Lions. John Shire will go back. Shire, of course, replacing the Wally Henry wide receiver as well as kick return man. Henry in the Paola Hospital in Philadelphia. I want to say hello to him today. And Weaver really hammered that one. Shira back in at the eight-yard line area. 
And Shira, who last year averaged over 11 yards a return, makes it to the 21, but there's a flag thrown at the 18-yard line. Don Dufek, the former Michigan All-American, making the stop. Shira will not break the long one like Wally Henry, but he does a very commendable job. Oh, well, that was a big play because he was able to get the ball out, out of that five or ten yard line area up to the 20 yard line but it all went for naught because there was a clip on the play and it'll go back to the 10 yard line again but this is really something because it's a lot Personal easier to run your offense clipping number 22 on the run back first down timeout that's for Art Wilson who came up with the clip on that particular play that was a 50 yard kick by Weaver 13 yard return that's moved back after the clip to the 10 yard line St. Louis has taken the lead over Dallas. 34-yard touchdown pass from Jim Hart to Mel Gray. Boy, that's quite a standoff going on in the heartland of the country in St. Louis. From the 10-yard line, first down for Philadelphia. They trail 6 to nothing. We have 13.06 to go until halftime. Ron Jaworski off to Harris. Harris, maybe two, and that's all to the 12-yard line. Seattle, as we mentioned earlier, had given up only 10 touchdowns in the last five games against some tough competition. Minnesota now has scored again. They lead Washington 14 to nothing. That was Terry Beeson, who the last three years has led Seattle in tackles, along with Jacob Green combining on the stop for Seattle. Comes to a second down and eight. Jokowski and team not for the field position and not having the football all that often. Carmichael, Smith, put to the bottom of the screen. Campfield on the quick pitch to the 15, and he dives forward, trying to get to the front of that chain. And let's see where they're going to mark it. It looks like around the 19-yard line area. Michael Jackson, who leads the team in tackles, over to make the stop. It's going to come down to a third down, still a couple of yards to go. As we see it here again, it was a it was a pitch play with right tackle Jerry Sizemore pulling out and leaning. He did a nice job blocking the corner, so Campfield was able to get to the outside but they still come up short their third and two now what they would like to do excuse me their third one but what they would like to do here is get a first down get to the 20 yard line but then open up this is only the 12th play of the game for Philadelphia John Harris their safety has been shaken up for Seattle replaced by minor here's your after a beautiful fake to Keith Crefley and that'll be a first down but there is a flag Boy, what a fake that time by Jaworski. Billy Camfield was hit by about three Seahawks, and then he hit Crefley enough for the first down, but we have a penalty play. That well, was a short yardage play, and what they were doing is they were faking a run into the line to the right side to hold the Seattle defense. Ron Jaworski came back. He was trying to throw to Harold Carmichael. He only had one pass receiver out deep, and that was Harold Carmichael. We'll be able to see him again. You see, he's, he's the outside man here. See. He's coming deep. He's trying to get out of the way. And of course he doesn't. He has the contact there. And then he was the only receiver. 22 defense. First down. That's the play you just saw that was illegal, where they cut Carmichael down. That is an automatic first down. In other words, he was past that five-yard line area. He was past the five-yard line area. And of course that is one rule. The other rule is you can't chop from below the knee, uh, below the waist. This is Harris on the first down, trying to shake the tackler. Good pursuit that time by Michael Jackson, the University of Washington standout. And they had got a yard, and that's all. Los Angeles now is going to have a cakewalk, it looks like. 24 to nothing over New Orleans. The Saints are 0-8. And, and, of course, Los Angeles knows that Atlanta won a big game today, and they must win to stay even in that NFC Western Division, which is becoming quite a fight. Second down, nine yards to go. Philadelphia trailing six to nothing, coming in here with a four-game winning streak. Last year, they won five in a row. They'd like to duplicate that today. We have a timeout call by Philadelphia. That's their first. And Jaworski will come over to visit with Coach Dick Vermeil. As Philadelphia finding, they're going to have quite a battle. Dick Vermeil said that the second half of our schedule, it is much tougher than the first half. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Philadelphia using their first timeout. They come to a second down. The ball resting just across the 23-yard line, second and 10. Jaworski was 16 touchdown passes. The most he's ever thrown in his career in a season was 18, and he'd like to at least get to that mark before the afternoon is over. 
ranked number three in the NFC as far as quarterbacks are concerned. He sets up a screen to Harris. Harris got a block, and he's out across the 25 to the 26. Joe Norman is over there again, a pickup of three yards on the play, and Norman's been all over the place. He has been. The whole defense has been very impressive. The whole Seahawk defense, they're really swarming. There's not just one player out there to make a play or two players. There seem to get five and six and seven. Watch here. Norman's a first. Boom, boom, boom. And that's what you have to get to play defense against anyone in the National Football League. You have to get a bunch of people where the ball is. Oakland leading Miami 9 to 3. Field goal contest. Third down, eight yards to go. Harris has come back in defensively after being shaken up earlier for Seattle. Jaworski on his third down. Hamfield, that'll be a first down. He's out to the 39 yard line. Vic Miner defending on the play as Billy Camfield, a man who's had a a lot of injuries, nagging injuries with a 13-yard catch on that play. This formation is the first time that the Eagles went to three wide receivers, plus they had Camfield up on the line. Now, they sent the three wide receivers deep. Camfield was on the line as a wingback. He came across underneath, underneath the coverage. As we watch Jacob Green here, the rookie, this is going to be an interesting match with Jerry Sizemore, because Jerry Sizemore is a nine-year veteran. Jacob Green, a rookie, number one draft choice. First down now at the 39 for Philadelphia. 10, 46 remaining in the second quarter. Jaworski on the play action. Crefley, what a catch. Crefley to the 38, and he caught that on his fingertips, and it was really thrown over there. John Harris made the stop. First down, Philadelphia. That was good for 23 yards. This is a great example of what we call play pass, where you fake the run, hold the linebackers, and Crefley was able to come off the line right up in that seam. It was a nice pattern by Crefley and a good throw by Jaworski because that's a time and if you don't get that there quick enough you can see there's four defenders coming and it had to be thrown right between them. Crefley now with 14 catches this year. He was out earlier this year with a shoulder separation. Here is Campfield on the pitch and he's going to get very little on that one. Excellent reaction again by the blue shirts from Seattle. Robert Hardy was over there. Jacob Green. Keith Butler. Seattle is really playing the wide stuff very effectively. To go back to Crefley, boy, those big tight ends that have finger control, the hand control he had on that last pass. And they have to be big because you have to be able, one, to find them in the middle, and then, two, get the ball to them in the middle. Really, the middle of the field in the passing game is where the tight end works. Second down, and still 10, almost 11 yards to go. Bill Cook has now come in on that defensive line. Three wide receivers for Philadelphia. Jaworski still looking, still looking. And he's trying to hit Campfield and John Harris with the interception. He was waiting for Campfield to make his move. He never did go where he thought he would. And John Harris with his second section of the year. And uh, Jaworski really upset at himself. We'll see it again here. Jaworski was looking to the short man first. You see it to his right there. Then he tried to throw deep after the short man. Usually, you do it the opposite. You look deep, come off short. On this play, he looked short, then tried to go deep. And of course, the interception. Ron Jaworski throwing the interception his eighth of the year. After last year, Dick Vermeil took every interception and near interception, took all that film and sat down with Ron Jaworski and went over it. And I would imagine that last one will be vividly recalled by Coach Vermeil. Right, and I'm sure that he won't wait until the offseason. I'm sure that's something that they'll probably do Monday because, as I said, that usually you do the opposite. You look deep and then come back short. He looked short and went deep. Harris with the interception, setting it up with a 19 as you look at Jim Zorn. He has Sawyer, his tight end, in motion. Gives to Lawrence McCutcheon. And McCutcheon, who was such an outstanding running back for Los Angeles on four different occasions, he rushed for over 1,000 yards in the season. Claude Humphrey making the stop on McCutcheon. He started the year with Denver, only carried the ball 12 times, then was cut loose. A lot of speculation about the fact that he was picked up because they played Denver twice. They might get some inside advantages. Well, that's a possibility, but you usually know more about a team in your division than any player that you can get from the other team. In all due respect. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, seven. 
Six to nothing Seattle with a the lead. There's a little fake draw by Zorn. Zorn has Sawyer wide open. The big tight end across the 45 to the 50. Tom Sawyer, who this year has 14 catches. With it, or he can throw the ball to Sawyer as he did on that play. See, he established early that he would run it. Then the Eagle defense tightens up, fakes it, and throws. First down at the 50-yard line. Zorn, far side. That's McCollum. And McCollum picks up five to the 45-yard line. Zorn really put this one on a rope. You know, he does. And as we see here, once that he gets you where you're not sure what he's going to do, where he runs and he throws and he sprints, then he takes you apart like a surgeon. That was Herman Edwards trying to defend on the play. McCollum is having his best year. He came in here with 33 catches. He had 46 of last year. Seventh year man from Montana State. Second down and five for the 45. Looks like Charlie Johnson may have fired offside. A flag complete to Largent. Largent to the 30 to the 26 yard line. Well, they'll refuse that penalty if, in fact, it is against Philadelphia. Randy Logan over to make the stop. Let's look at it again. We'll see it here. It's just a, a quick out, a five-yard pattern out to the outside. He did the same thing to the left to McCollum, said that one worked pretty well. Try it to the right, does it to Largent. That one worked pretty well. Maybe he'll go back again to McCollum. Boy, that puts a defense on their ear, doesn't it? That was an 18-yard pickup. In fact, it was a penalty against Philadelphia, as we anticipated, but... As you might suspect, they refused it. Now, Oakland leads Miami 16-3. Oakland with three straight wins. Jim Plunkett has to be one of the big stories of this season. I'll tell you, he has his confidence now, and he sure has been impressive. First down from the 26-and-a-half-yard line of Philadelphia. 16. Seattle on the move. Largent in motion at the bottom of the screen. Zorn gives off to Dornick. And Dornick, who played his collegiate football at Washington State, Moves it inside the 25 to the 24. That'll be a pickup of four yards. You see Dan Dornick walking back there. He thought that he should have broken that one and gotten a little more off that. That's the same option that we saw where Zorn threw to Sawyer. That time, instead of faking to Dornick and keeping him throwing, he handed the ball to Dornick. You're looking at Howard Mudd. He's the man that the plays come through. Jerry Rome is in the press box. They come to Mudd, who's the offensive line coach, and then they shuttle the plays in. Second down and eight, a pickup of two. Rabel and McCollum in at wide receiver. Lawrence McCutcheon inside the 20 to the 19. And that'll bring up a third down, still a long two yards to go. Bill Berge, who's a leading tackler for this football team, made the stop for Philadelphia. There's an impressive player, Bill Berge. I was talking to him in the locker room before the game, and you know he's the, the prototype of what a National Football League linebacker should be. He looks intense when he's on the table getting taped. I saw him down there. They were giving him a rub down. He was chewing his tobacco down there. He looked like he might be ready That's to a play. real player. You lay there, you chew tobacco, you have a beard, you spit on the floor. That's that's what linebacking's all about. That's right. Just get real dirty before you go out there, right? Third down and three. And carrying the ball is Larry Brinson. That ball is loose. Larry Brinson, who hadn't even carried the ball this year for Seattle. Lawrence McCutcheon coming up with a fumble recovery, and they lose yardage back out to the 22-yard line. Loss of three. This is one thing as we see the play again here. It's a sweep. It's the old student body right. They had McCutcheon leading, both guards pulling. Brinson right here. Now he has a tough thing because if he fights for the yardage, he can always you know, have the chance to fumble as he did there. If he doesn't fight, he's not going to get the first down. See right here, he needs two more yards. So he lowers, he lowers his shoulder. There's four tackles there. He's fighting, and of course, he lost the ball. This will be a 41-yard attempt by Herrera, who is two for two today. Zorn to hold. Herrera's 41-yarder has enough distance, but it's no good. Wide to the left. So Herrera missing his first attempt after hitting one from 21 yards and 32 yards. And so Philadelphia still trails six to nothing in this game, but I would imagine Dick Vermeil kind of breathed a sigh of relief after that one. That's the amazing thing about this game thus far. Everything that Seattle has done, the time of possession, the score is still only six to nothing, and that's one reason that the Philadelphia Eagles should feel real good. Well, they're not their number one ranked defense, I guess, for nothing, as they have hung in there, even though they've had to play an awful lot in this first half. You see Walters? 
<laughs> he was telling Jaworski, get in here. The clock's running. There's no timeout. Jaworski is four for eight thus far, 67 yards, and of course that one interception that he suffered the last time. On the 23-yard line, Jaworski to Giamona, and Giamona, who had 79 yards last week in that win against Chicago, picks up four yards. Giamona, I think it was said very well about him. Keith Crepley said he has such a big heart, he doesn't even have a chest big enough to hold it. Right. When you're 5'9 and you weigh 175 pounds and you're running straight ahead at these NFL defenses, you have to have something. And actually, they list him at 5'9, but I don't even think he's that tall. No, 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 he's not. That's giving him an inch or two. Gain of four, second and six. Six to nothing. Seattle. Here's Giamona again. And Little Louie, as they call him, picked up a yard, and that's all. Third down now. Five yards to go. Michael Jackson making the stop on Giamona, who, of course, is the nephew of Dick Vermeil. Dick Vermeil said when he fumbled, he disavowed any knowledge of any relationship with him. Then when he played later, he was his nephew. That's the way we coaches are. You know, if everything's going well, we love them. Hey, great, everyone's nice. And if, you, <laughs> and if they don't, you want to disown them. Here we go on a third down. The Eagles one of three thus far. And third down five. Rodney Parker has checked in. They have three wide receivers. Smith and Carmichael the other. Five defensive backs in for the Seahawks. Jaworski up to Giamona. Giamona to the 30. He lowers his head for the first down. Giamona to the 35-yard line. John Harris made the tackle. But Giamona, had he not lowered his head, might not have gotten that first down. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who made this play. There was guard Petey Perot here. As we see him come out here and see it's a, it's a running screen type of thing. Giamona has the ball right here. But watch, just right there, the block there that picked off the linebacker so that Giamona could get down there to lower his head to pick up the first down. It is a first down at the 35. Philadelphia having to work hard for anything. If you look at the stats on Ron Jaworski. Jaworski wanting to throw. Look out. That is cut. Carl Smith down to the 40, 35, 30. Boy, that was close to going the other way. Charles Smith caught that pass, but it looked like for a moment Kerry Justin, the defensive back, might have an interception. That's the one thing that is, is tough, and you really want those defensive backs not to go for that type of thing, because unless you really have it, he went for it, Charlie Smith got it, now there's no, no one else there. Had he let him catch a tackle, it's a five-yard gain. By it's being dead. aggressive, which you like to see, he goes for it, boom, Charlie Smith catches it. Now, once he gets by there, there's no one there for 35 yards. Make it 38, 38 yard pickup by Smith on the play. First down now at the 27th of Seattle. Camfield, Billy Camfield to the 25. Gain of two, Robert Harvey making the stop. That last play, Mike Hogan came in for the first time, and that's a familiar name as far as Philadelphia fans are concerned. He was picked up, there he is, number 30, when he was cut by the New York Giants. And Nick Vermeil said before it's all over, he could be a starting fullback. He really likes this guy. Ran out of any place to play in New York, which is somewhat of a mystery. And now the two-minute warning is here. So it's going to be a second down eight for Philadelphia. From the 25 of Seattle, the Eagles trailing six to nothing as we come back to finish this first half. Seattle with a six to nothing lead as we've reached the two minute warning, the timeouts remaining. Eagles with two, the time of possession right now. Seattle's had the ball one second short of 20 minutes in this first half. Philadelphia, eight minutes, one second. But still the most important statistic is the score on the board and the Seahawks only have six points. Second down and eight from the 25. That's Crepley now, the tight end jumping up. Jaworski back. And he has Crepley wide open. He dropped it. Crepley had it and couldn't hang on. Boy, you won't see him do that very often. No, you won't. And you wonder what Ron Jaworski is thinking. He's thinking, what type of pass do you have to throw? They had two tight ends, Crepley and Spagnola, lined up on the same side. Spagnola run a, a short pattern. Crefley run the deep pattern. Look at that pass right in the numbers. He hit him right between the eight and the four. Ooh. 
Boy, what is going through the mind of Crefley right now, huh? What's going through the, the mind of Dick Vermeil and Ron Jaworski and Sid Gilman up here in the press box? The same thing. What do you have to do? Third down and eight from the 25. That's again, Crefley jumps in. That's the same set they had on that last play. Jaworski back again. Protection is there. He hits Crefley. Came right back to him. The big tight end hammers his way to the 15, and that'll be a first down. I like that. You come right back to the guy who dropped the pass just a moment ago. And that's the way to do it. You know, you don't lose confidence in a player because he drops one pass. There's many more where that came from, and I'm sure that's what Ron Jaworski said. He said, look, forget it. Don't worry about it. There's a lot more where that came from. All he did that time is he sent Spagnola deep and Crefley short. First down now at the 15. A minute 21 remaining in this first half. Smith, Carmichael. Carmichael still looking for his first catch of this game to keep his string going. Here's Giamona. The blockers ahead of him. And Giamona hit very hard. Hardy and Justin over there. And the ball, was it fumbled over there? It was not no. a live football anyway. Looked like it got away from him for a moment. Timeout is called by Philadelphia. They have one remaining. They actually picked up maybe a half yard on a play, a yard at best. Philadelphia has try been trying to run to the right side, and, and they really haven't been getting that thing blocked over on that side. They haven't been successful, and one of the big reasons is Jacob Green. He's been making a lot of plays over there. They say that on the left side, Jacob Green, Michael Jackson, the left linebacker, and the strong safety, Keith Simpson. They say that's the future of this Seahawk defense. You saw Joe Pisarchi, who did just an excellent job last week. Let's look ahead to week number 10. Dallas is really struggling with St. Louis. They have taken the lead in the game. We'll meet New York. Washington, Chicago, that'll be a good one. Atlanta against the Cardinals. Detroit and Minnesota. San Francisco, Green Bay, and Philadelphia plays under the Dome again next week in New Orleans. Two games indoors. And I'll be in Minnesota for that Detroit-Minnesota game, and you're going to be in Palm Springs? <laughs> How do you get that kind of assignment? Loafing down there. You can't be working down there. No. What do they have to do, rest you up for the rest of the year? I won't admit what I'm doing down there. <laughs> I won't say. All right. Second down. Nine. Philadelphia with 12 yards rushing, 121 passing. They trail six to nothing. Giamona, he throws a ball. It's Crepley, and Crepley is out of bounds at about the one-yard line. Giamona last week threw a halfback option complete. He did it again, this time to Crepley. You know, that first one that we saw may have been the same type of thing, the one that he threw back to Jaworski. He may have been looking for someone downfield, couldn't find anyone, and decided to throw it back to the quarterback and see if he could find anything on that one he did find someone as tight end Keith Crefley there at the one yard line do you see Crefley try to kick his legs over there at the end to get it past that pylon in the corner the coffin corner and now it's first and goal at the one Philadelphia trying to tie this game up that's Carmichael now jumping over into the slot position Billy Campfield and Campfield is in for the touchdown. Billy Campfield takes it in and it's all tied up six all. Campfield scoring his first touchdown rushing this year. Well, see, they did run it to the right side that time, and of course they got they stopped penetration. There wasn't a lot of penetration where Campfield was able to get the push, get the ball across the goal line. I think. Philadelphia finally here at the end of the second quarter is finally getting their offense started the way you expect the Philadelphia offense to be. And Crefley, after dropping that one, came back to make two big catches. He's redeemed himself, and Philadelphia still came away with a touchdown. Just took a little longer. Shira to hold. Tony Franklin, the point after, and did he hit that ball like a line shot? And now the Eagles have taken the lead 7 to 6 with 58 seconds remaining in this first half of play. So after all that work by Seattle and having all that time in possession, they still are down by one point. That's why that's why we always see the most important thing is they score on the on the board and as we see here the off guard PD Payroll pulls gets a little push right there so Campfield can get the ball to the end zone. Campfield was to play more last week. But Giamona was playing so well, they just kept Louie in there. And now that Campfield is healthy, Dick Vermeil plans to use him a lot more. He says that Billy's one of those guys that has to 
be healthy as it bothers you to play with those nagging injuries. Right, it does, and they still miss Wilbert Montgomery. This is a team without Wilbert Montgomery, and Ron Jaworski says that they had to establish the running game today. They had to win the battle in the trenches. They've only had 12 or 13 yards so far in the first half rushing, so they're not doing that. Here's Franklin kicking off. 58 seconds left in this first half. Will Lewis from the 12. And Lewis just couldn't get turned up the field as a wave was formed that time by Philadelphia. They're going to move the ball to the 18-yard line. Seven-yard return. Harry Harrington, the man down to make the tackle. Their second-round draft pick out of Jackson State. And here is the final. Dallas beating St. Louis 27-24. You know, last year, Dallas beat St. Louis by one point in St. Louis in that opening game. So the Cardinals have really had some tough struggles against Dallas. We have a man shaking up. That's the man who made the tackle, Harrington. Harrington this week was moved to a halfback spot as Dick Vermeule wanted to get him some more playing time. He's been playing fullback most of the year. Well, he had thought of moving Harrington to halfback earlier, but he felt the fact that he was a rookie, he would like him to learn one position, to really get comfortable in the one position at the fullback. Now he feels that he has, and now he's able to move him to the other position as a halfback where he can do both. John, let me go back to that Dallas-St. Louis game. Dallas won that game with 45 seconds left to go on a Danny White to Tony Hill 28-yard touchdown pass. Danny White has sure made that adjustment from Roger Staubach to <clears throat> Danny White, and he's been very impressive this year. So Harrington will be walking off on his own. That's good. As at the 18-yard line, Seattle will have it. Let's look and see if we can figure out how he got hurt. Well, he takes on that blocker right there. He knocks the blocker himself, everyone into the ball carrier. And where he got hurt was by his own two men as they came to help finish off the tackle. They also helped finish off Perry Harrington a little. Well, he did a good job on that play, didn't he? That's what it's all about. You have to take on the block and then make the the tackle you know a lot of players they think they get down there and they take on a block or the wedge and that's sufficient that's the first part of it the second part take on the block drive them back make the tackle Philadelphia was really beat up last week against Chicago they don't want to sustain too many more injuries I'll say one thing for Dick Vermeil's team though he believes that anybody on this team is capable of starting and winning and he's been put to the test in the last couple of weeks Largent and McCollum, the wide receivers. McCollum in motion. And Zorn, with only 58 seconds left, is still going after it. Steve Rabel. Rabel has a first down catch across the 35. And they have no huddle. They're ready to go again. Well, this, this is, Seattle team can move it. This is where those timeouts that they took earlier will hurt them. They should have three left. They only have one. There's the time remaining. 34 seconds. Zorn back. Gets it off to Dornick. Dornick's going to try to get up the field and out of bounds. Jerry Robinson over there. Picked up virtually nothing on the play. It'll bring up a second down and stops the clock with 27 seconds remaining. You know, a lot of teams, John, with 58 seconds left and on their own 18-yard line might just close it out and head into the dressing room, but not this Seattle team. And not Seattle, but again, if, as I mentioned earlier when they took those two timeouts that really did hurt in this situation because you like to save your timeouts for the end of the half and the end of the game so that you can use them in bunches so you don't have to throw everything to the sideline as they do now three wide receivers in and one of them this time is Jesse Green Zorn on a second down and 10 this is Green the man who checked in that'll be a first down at the 50 yard line and you see the time now, 17, 16, and Seattle's going to use their last timeout. That was a bad decision by Jesse Green there. He ran an out pattern, and the reason that you run the out pattern in that situation is so when you catch the ball, you can step out of bounds. He caught it towards the sideline, as we'll see again, and instead of turning to the outside to get out of bounds, he turned back inside to try and gain yardage. Now, as we see here, see right here, he should have caught the ball and worked towards the sideline to get out of bounds. He caught it, he worked inside, which made the Seattle Seahawks use their last time out. There's Jack Matera. I think he's very serious about just what he said to Jim Zorn, also Howard Mudd. Mudd, along with Jim Zorn and Steve Largent, 
climbed Mount Rainier this summer, some 14,000 feet. Zorn and Largent got up there. They both wondered what they were doing up there afterwards. They were so tired, but they said the real story was Howard Mudd. He had a bad knee that he hurt when playing in the National Football League, and they say he walked all the way up with a knee brace. Right, and he had a 40-pound uh, pack on his back also, and I think they all got up there and said, what are we doing here? Thinking Zorn said about Largent, he says Steve's always smiling. He said he wasn't smiling when he got to the top of that. Just a dull, blank look. All right, here's the situation. No timeouts remaining. Dick Vermeil's team with a one-point lead. First down at the 49, the Seattle end of the field. They'll try and force everything to the inside so that they don't let them get out of bounds on a completion. Three wide receivers are in, and Zorn is back. And Zorn is going to Largent. And Largent is out of bounds. Did you see how Steve decoyed the defensive back that time? He didn't even let that defensive back know that the ball had been thrown his way. We're going to watch this again. Of course, it doesn't count, but it's still a great catch. Watch this. He gets up. Again, it's a timing thing over his head and over his outside shoulder. That is the perfect pass had it been inbounds. Because if you throw it over the head, make them run for it. But over the outside shoulder, there's no way that that ball can be deflected or intercepted. Last year, Largent had 1,237 yards in receiving. That led the National Football League. He had 66 catches. Been in the Pro Bowl for the last two years. Had they had some timeouts here, they wouldn't have to throw those sideline passes up. You saw the time remaining in the upper right-hand portion. Zorn scrambling around and trying to hit McCollum at the 30. That'll stop the clock with four seconds left. I tell you, even with four seconds, though, you just kind of, if you're Philadelphia, pace back and forth, waiting on the sideline, hoping they don't come up with some unusual, some unbelievable play, because anybody could do it. It's this guy. It is, and with four seconds, he's wondering, now what do I do? I have to get the ball up the field for a field goal, but if I take that long to get it up the field, then there won't be any time left to kick it. If I throw it short, we can't kick the field goal anyway, so what do I do? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, you're a coach. You're supposed to know what to do. I'd say run out the clock. He might try the Big Ben play, but they're not set up for it with four seconds. Last play of this first half. Zorn to McCollum, broken up beautifully that time. Coming over to make that play was Richard Blackmore, the fifth defensive back that was pit in, in that particular passing situation. So that's the end of the first half. The score, Philadelphia 7, Seattle 6. The preceding message was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subaru, inexpensive, and built to stay that way. Alcoa, producer of energy-saving aluminum. And by the new Norelco Rototract Razor. Ready to go now. Second half play, Efren Herrera will kick off. <laughs> Oh, I'm on camera. Look at that. There's a redhead. There aren't too many of us around. We have to stick together. We're all number one. All we redheads. <laughs> From the 35, Herrera was two for three in the field goal department. As you look at Billy Campfield, he is the man along with Perry Harrington. Is Harrington back there again? He was shaken up in that first half of play. Herrera ready. 7-6. Philadelphia with the lead. Rara with that missed field goal that could come back and haunt the Seattle team yet. It is Harrington back there along with Campfield, but Campfield will bring it out. He's out to the 15 to the 20. And that's it. Again, very good coverage that time by Seattle. Seattle's really done a good job on the kickoff coverage. Michael Jackson and Don Dufek over there to make the stop. In fact, Seattle this year has done a very good job all year long as far as covering. One of the reasons is the, the return team is always thinking of the possibility of an onside kick. The normal alignment on a kickoff return is a five-man front, a four-man wedge, and two deep. 
to prevent the onside kick, Philadelphia was in a 6-3-2, which is good for an onside kick, but it's not the best return formation to be in. Really changes it a little bit, doesn't it? That's a sure good does. point from the 19-yard line. They just haven't had anything going on those kickoffs. This is Carmichael, and now he continues his string, but he's going to lose yardage on that play. Dave Brown was there almost as quickly as the football. So Carmichael with that catch, now now has extended his string to 121 games with at least one catch. I don't know how they'll ever stop him. I don't think you can keep this guy from catching a pass. Especially when he's losing three yards <laughs> on the pass. I wondered if someone maybe didn't mention to Jaworski, hey, Harold hasn't caught a pass yet. He said, well, I'll get that over with right away and throws him a pass for a four-yard loss. I think an interesting point there is there's a pressure on Jaworski to keep that string going as there is on Carmichael. Second down, 15. Joe Norman has come in at linebacker, and Billy Campfield gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. Robert Hardy made the stop. They call him Hartburn Hardy. Tenth round draft pick a year ago from Jackson State. Now, Hardy is one of those guys, John Madden, you wouldn't draft because the computer wouldn't agree with what a prospect he would be. That's right, and there's a number of those types besides Hardy. The same thing was true of of Charlie Johnson the same thing was true of Carl Hairston we always had to believe that the defensive lineman had to be 6'4 6 6 some of these people are 6 1 and 6 2 play as well as a big guy five defensive backs for Seattle on a third down and nine Jaworski would like to get this initial series in the second half going he's hit by Giannasa Sopo but gets rid of it somehow to Giamona it won't oh, wait a minute. Though. They say he was in the grasp and control of Kudasa Sopo. And so that would be the first sack of this football game. And that's a tough one. They have that new rule that, that you can't hit the quarterback after the whistle blows. So what they're trying to do is give him a good uh, whistle. See, he said that he was in the grasp there. The referee was right there, blew the whistle. Now anything that happens after that really doesn't count. So the first down catch does not count. There is Dewey Asasopo. How do you spell that guy's name? <coughs> Number 74 <laughs> in your program and in your heart. <laughs> There's Rudiger back. He had one block, of course, in that first half. There is Will Lewis, 41, standing at the 50-yard line. Philadelphia getting themselves deployed. Nine seconds on the clock. They're taking all their time. Here's Rudiger, rush put on, and Rudiger has it to the 47. Lewis gets away from the initial man. He's to the 40, and he is dropped at the 38-yard line. Zach Henderson, who hit him further up the field, then came back to make the tackle on that play. A 37-yard kick by Runniger, a 10-yard return by Will Lewis. Looks like a whirling dervish right there. He had two tacklers there ready to make the tackle. He gave the spin to Whirl and picked up four or five more yards. Well, John, now you are not real sure how to spell this guy's name. Tuliasa Sopo, number 74, and here it is. As a T. coach, you didn't have to spell a lot, did you? No, You're no, you, no. We just say Sasafa Sopo, you know, number 74. Well, now we have to get Sasafa Sopo blocked, and then. Because when you're the head coach, anything you say is what the guy's name is. From the 38-yard line on first down, Zorn to throw. Sawyer the tight end. Sawyer to the 30, and he has a first down. Jerry Robinson really paid for that tackle as Sawyer lowered his head. And a first down for Seattle. And Seattle's still having the same type of mixture here. Everything starts with a running play in this offense. And they either hand it off or they fake it. That time, it was a, a, a fake running play and, and a short pass to the tight end. Robinson got a ride that time from number 81, Sawyer. Sawyer is a former player for the Houston Oilers, drafted in the 11th round in 1975. First down at the 27th. Zorn with protection. And Zorn hits his And Steve Largent has the touchdown catch, and did Zorn throw this one 27 yards. And we'll watch Largent here again, but what work, what timing between Steve Largent and Jim Zorn. They just know where each other are going to be. Watch this. It's a short post. He makes a nice move there, Roy Nell Young, and the ball is right there on his second step. There was really not much that Young could do about it. 
Largent now with four touchdown catches this year. Boy, that was a thing of beauty. Efren Herrera now trying to get the shoe on. What's happening here? Well, he has to get that thing tied up before he can kick it, but that was a great shot by the cameraman down there, having that isolate there all the way on Largent. He knew who he was going to throw to. Here's a kick by Efren Herrera. There's a flag. There's a couple of flags down. Look again at it. We'll see it again now. Watch the timing here. Largen is just breaking when that ball is thrown. He gets it on the third step. Roynell Young, there's nothing he can do. That was an offside against Philadelphia. The point, of course, will count. And the Seattle Seahawks now with a 13 to 7 lead after that 27 yard touchdown strike. As Jim Zorn, now for this year, has thrown 11 touchdowns, the Eagles have a fight on their hands. A while ago, John Madden, you were making a point about how they're having to deploy themselves for the kickoff. Right, and we see how spread out they are. They have the three men spread out instead of the four-man wedge. We look at the front line here. They have six men instead of five. They're in good position for an onside kick attempt, but they're, run they're not really in good position for a return. That's a heck of a thing. When the other team's leading, you're still concerned about an onside yeah. kick, huh? Herrera kicking off. He hits this one very well. Billy Campfield. Campfield out to the 15, to the 17, and that's all. Steve Largent in this game has four catches for 73 yards. Of course, that 27-yard touchdown strike. As you look at the time elapsed, didn't take very long, did it? No, and only two plays. When they get ready to strike, they can strike right now. Soren is 12 for 20, 166 yards and a touchdown. And so again, Philadelphia will have to play some catch-up football. They trailed six to nothing, then at halftime led seven to six, and now down thirteen to seven. Boy, when you're on top, you're seven and one with the best record in the NFL, people come clawing and kicking and scratching to get back in. That much tougher to win. Jaworski giving up, very little running room on that play. Robert Hardy leading the charge defensively. As again, Seattle clamping it up pretty good in the middle as Leroy Harris just didn't have much running room. And that makes Ron Jaworski's job all the tougher because as we were talking to him earlier before the game, he thought that they could run, that they could establish the run. And I would say that they don't even have 20 yards rushing yet in this game. And now that puts all the pressure on him because now he's ending up with these second and long and third and long situations. They had 13 yards rushing in that first half. Second down, seven. Jaworski. Carmichael. And Carmichael has it broken away. Carry Justin knocked it away. Seattle has it. Seattle has a football at the 47. Michael Jackson comes up with it. But it was Carry Justin who reached in on Carmichael and batted the ball away from him. Harold Carmichael didn't see that coming. He caught the ball. It was a, a double zone. See, a short and deep. He caught it between the two. He just starts to run to put the ball away and gets hit from behind on the shoulder, and it bounces out. And the turnover gives Seattle excellent field position. But Dick Vermeil, you see him. He's got to be concerned. His team has just turned the football over. John, you were just saying, those are the kinds of things that always happen to me when I come here as a coach. It always same. This is, this is really a weird game. You, you, you think you're getting started, and then you have the fumble. And it always happens to me here in this play. At the 47-yard line, after the turnover, Seattle with the football and with a 13-7 lead. Zorn to Joe Dat. Joe Dat gets away. First down to the 35. The ball is loose again. It looks like Seattle has recovered. That's Dornick, Dan Dornick, who's on the ball at the 25, so they picked up their 10 yards after the fumble. I was just saying weird things that happen here. Philadelphia fumbles, they get the ball. They come out here, Joe Dad has the ball, he's going, he gets hit, he fumbles the ball, and it goes out and they recover it for a 10-yard gain. Watch this as he gets hit there, the ball comes out, who does it go to? It goes, instead of, look at all those Philadelphia guys, it goes right to a Seattle guy. Tell you, Dornick did a good job getting on that ball. That's not all that easy. They had 12 yards on the pass and another 10 yards on the fumble. First down at the 25 now. I know how Dick Vermeil feels. Thorne back to throw. Largent. Roy Nell Young almost had the interception. 
Young, who is facing one of the best that ever played in this game, Steve Largent, had good position on this play. I think that Jim Zorn took a little too much off this pass. It's a corner route. Now, what Largent's doing, he's going inside, trying to sell Young that he's going to the post. He goes to the outside. Had the ball been led a little more, it would have been a touchdown. I think Zorn took a little off and didn't get it up over his head. You see here, we see Zorn coming back. Now we know what's going on with Largent. He throws the ball. It's a little short so that he can't stretch out in the end zone. That was Claude Humphrey that hit Zorn just as he released the football. I know it. And there is Young, the number one draft pick. Boy, what a baptism he's got in his rookie year. They have come at him with everything they can throw. Here is Joe Dad. Flag on the play. Joe Dad at the 19-yard line. Well, that offensive line really fired out, but let's see what the penalty's all about. It's probably against that offensive line that fired out, and it's probably holding. And you're exactly right, Mr. Madden. And it's a great drive stopper. You just get things going, and boom, that holding penalty comes out. I don't think there's anything that hurts a drive more than a holding penalty. Let's see if we can see it here. The center looks okay to me. The left tackle looks okay. The lead block looks okay. I don't see it. That's Yarno. Second down. He didn't look all right to the official. Well, we looked at him initially, and he looked okay. <laughs> so that's the reason you and the officials never got along. You didn't uh, see the same game. I know it. I don't, you know, he, I, he probably was holding in there, but it, uh, it sure didn't look like it. <laughs> but none of them ever looked like it. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, awesome. I never had a penalty call that I agreed with. Him. The they fans are booing. <laughs> they lose 10 yards on the hold. Second down and 20 from the 35. Dorn got a little quarterback draw, but it's not going to work. Ken Clark smelled that one out. Clark, number 71, who had a big play last week against Chicago, comes that's, up with this tackle. That's one play that I'm sure that the Eagles have worked against is this quarterback draw. See, Zorn goes back. There's nothing open. He's going to run the quarterback draw. They had a good penetration in the middle. There was no place for him to run. Coach Klassen back there. Also Carl Peterson, as you see them looking on, as we come to a third down and 24. Carl Harrison is also in on that last tackle along with Ken Clark. Three wide receivers are in for Seattle on a third and 24. McCollum goes in motion. Zorn setting up a little screen intended for Joe Dett. But one of the Eagles, that Eagle being Claude Humphrey, got a hand on the football and messed it up. And so, as you said, that penalty stopped the drive along with some fine defense, and now it's a fourth down for Seattle. Claude well, Humphrey wasn't fooled on that, and he started to rush the passer. As we see him here at the top of the screen, see, he feels screen, he stops the rush, he gets back into it, gets his hand up, and he would love to have had an interception there. He's one of the few players on this team that has played against Jim Zorn. I tell you, Dick Vermeil said that Humphrey has been a tremendous addition. He's really been a good influence on this football team. Herman Weaver hit that one straight up in the air. And it's going to take a Philadelphia bounce and come back out to the 33. That ball went straight up in the air. Weaver, who earlier kicked one 50 yards, did not get that one to his liking. And so Philadelphia has the football first down at their own 32. That kick by Weaver was seven yards. And so from the 32, Philadelphia with it, a new guard is in. Ron Baker's replaced Woody Peoples at right guard. 13-7, Seattle with the lead. Harris, Giamona, the running backs, and a little movement on that play before the snap. Here's Giamona out to the 33, but that's going to go against the Eagles. They had people jumping all over the place. And I think the person that jumped was a right guard, number 63, Ron Baker, who just went in for Woody Peoples. They faked the stunt. They brought the linebacker over in front of him like he was going to blitz, and he jumped. There's Baker coming out now, and Peoples back in. Peoples is the guy, along with Bobby Howard, that Vermeil at the start of the year sent letters to and said he thought they ought to retire. But Peoples would not retire. motion, number 20, offense declined, second down. Leroy Harris moved. There were two or three Eagles that moved on that play. But I started to say Peoples came to camp. Vermeil leveled with him. He said, if you cannot become a starter on this football team, we will not keep you because of your age. Well, he's been a starter all year. Right, and they say that he just practices like a 25-year-old. So after the penalty, it's now second down. 
Nine yards to go. They did refuse it. Harris. And now Crepley, you see him jump in. He jumps in alongside Spagnola, who's already in there, a tight end. Jaworski back, a flag on the play. Carmichael, he's moved to the 50. Look at this big 6'8 guy go to the 40, to the 37. But, as we said, there is a penalty flag it's holding against Philadelphia. So Carmichael's been involved in two plays. One of them a fumble. Now this one will come back. He's shaken up on this play. Well, he's up now, walking back. Now, he was on the same side as Charles Smith. On the left side, he runs it out there. Again, it was a nice pattern. He hit just as he was breaking. And one thing about this big guy, he can run, can he? At can six he? eight, he still has the moves of a smaller, elusive type. Holding number 62, offense, second down. That was Payroll who was guilty. Coming up shortly, checklist down there. He was talking about special teams now. There's Crepley again jumping in to the wing position outside Spagnola. Quick pitch. This is Harrington. Harrington to the 30. Harrington to the 34-yard line. Well, they have two tight ends blocking on that side. John Harris made the tackle. That's an interesting formation. They put their two wide receivers on the left side. They have the two tight ends, Crepley and Spagnola, on the right side blocking together here as we see. Then they pull their right tackle. Jerry Sizemore, who led on that play, did a nice job on Kerry Justin to allow the ball to get outside. Harrington playing more and more for this Dick Vermeil team. He's going to be quite a football player. He has one touchdown this year, a 19-yarder against the Giants. Rodney Parker is now checked in. Three wide receivers in on a third down and eight. Only set running back is Giamona. Jaworski back on third and eight. Carmichael, and that will be a first down. He's still on his feet. Look at this big guy to the 49-yard line. People bouncing off of him all over the place. Michael Jackson, if we made the stop, Carmichael really getting pounded in this game, showing how tough he is. As we'll see this play again to Carmichael, it was an interesting <clears throat> formation. He had three wide receivers plus Camfield up on the line, so they had four wide receivers. They spread the Seattle defense out across the field. Then Jaworski could go back and find an open man and hit him. The open man on that last play was Harold Carmichael. Harold Carmichael, since 73, has averaged 52 catches and eight touchdowns a year. He came into this contest with 29 grabs. And he has really been important in this series. First down at the 49 of Seattle, Jaworski. Jaworski has Carmichael. Well, he could have been a couple of inches taller than 6'8". He might have had that. Oh, Jaworski's man. He was standing back there, and he's clapping his hands. He knew that he had that one, and it was just a little too long. It was a... A post pattern here to Harold Carmichael. We see him going to the post. Jaworski just puts a little too much on it. Harold Carmichael can't get to it. And he really stretched out Ooh, to get to it. Did he too. ever? It was, see, now watch Jaworski here. He throws it. <clears throat> it's a little too much. And he's thinking, geez, if I could just take it a little off that, it would have been a touchdown. They may catalog that one away. Bob Fishman, our director, the only director in the National Football League that knows how to make egg creams. Had three different looks at that play. Egg creams. There's no egg and there's no cream. But it's an egg cream, and he made them for us last night. And if he ever decides to give up directing, he could go into that business. He had the seltzer he brought all the way from Brooklyn, New York. And we're going to have a timeout call by Philadelphia. Jaworski didn't like what he saw that time. And so at the 727 mark of this third quarter. The Eagles playing catch-up football, trying to win their fifth game in a row. <clears throat> well, Philadelphia using their first timeout, and John, uh, you feel that that could be a very important timeout in this game. I think so, and uh, timeouts are always big, as I said before, at the end of the half and at the end of the game. But when you're in a tight game, as this one is going to be, those timeouts are very, very precious, and you don't want to use one in the third quarter. That could come back to haunt them. He moved ahead of Carroll Dale today, 17th place. Carroll Dale, the fine receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Harold Carmichael, what a year he's having. Something special. First down, or I should say second down, 10 at the 49-yard line. 13-7, Seattle with the lead. Jaworski. Leroy Harris. Harris to the 40. Has the first down at the 5 to the 30-yard line. First down, the Eagles. 
Eagles mixing it up very effectively now as Jaworski using his full complement of receivers. That time, Harris, for a 19-yard pickup, Joe Norman and Keith Simpson made the tackle. It was a nice run by Leroy Harris here. You see, he gets to the sideline. It looks like the Seattle defense thinks he's going to get out of bounds. He starts to the outside like he's running to the sideline, makes a little cut, goes back against the grain, and picks up another five yards. Harris this year caught a 51-yard touchdown pass against Washington, his first touchdown ever via the receiving route, and Minnesota still leading Washington. They're scoring some points. On the 30-yard line, first down now for the Eagles. Up the middle comes Harris. Boy, is he doing a job to the 18, and that's another first down. That's what Ron Jaworski said they wanted to do is establish the run. It's taken them a little while, but they look like they're getting some good mixture going now, and that formation they had the two tight ends to the right side which spread out the Seahawk defense and gave him a little crease to the inside for Leroy Harris to get into Leroy Harris who came into this game with 182 yards picking up a first down on that play just outside the 18 yard line a first down for the Eagles. that's Crepley jumping into that formation that we have mentioned on numerous occasions outside Spagnola. Jaworski back. Lots of time. Broken up beautifully by John Harris. Carmichael, the intended receiver. Jaworski couldn't find anybody open, then tried to throw it through some defenders, and Harris got a hand on it. That was sure good coverage on that, as we'll see the play again from the end zone here. You see, Jaworski gets back here. He has good pass protection. He has plenty of time. He can step up, but there's no one open, so he had to buy a little time to move around and watch deflection by Harris he darn near caught the ball with one hand Harris has played well today he had an interception earlier and this time deflecting the ball that would have been a touchdown no question o Oakland leading Miami 16 10 second down 10 from the 18 of Seattle Eagles will like to tie this one up and then take a lead with a point after here comes Harris Harris to the 15 that's going to bring up third down still seven yards to go for Philadelphia Norman Jacob Green and on the tackle there's Green. You saw him in the East West game and you thought he was really something then. I was impressed with Jacob Green in that game. In fact I made a statement at that time I had watched him practice all week in the East West practice and I said that the best player in this game is Jacob Green. Jacob Green coming into this contest leading the team with five sacks. Houston now has taken the lead over Denver. Houston with all those former Oakland players now. Third down and seven from the 15. There's Crepley again in a wing position. Harris, the only set running back. The crowd is really noisy right now. And a touchdown to Smith. A flag has been thrown. Charles Smith, who always prays after every touchdown, caught that ball bouncing off of the defender. I want to see this one again as a very well-thrown pass by Jaworski. It was. It was a timing pass, and, and it's against pass the Seahawks. Number 20, defense declined, touchdown. Let's so look at the, it again. So the touchdown will come. I think the official had the wrong number of the, of the guilty uh, defender here, but you see a little bump right there. It was 22, not 20. Dave Brown, but he bumped him when the ball was in the air and before it got there. Very religious man, Charles Smith. What a year he is having. He's had his best year in the National Football League. It's all even now, and with a chance to give him the lead is Tony Franklin. What a game we have at the Kingdom. And Franklin, who's 29 of 29 in the point after department, makes it 14-13 Philadelphia. So the Eagles enjoy that slim one-point advantage again. And I emphasize the word slim because when you play Seattle, that's just not enough. No, it sure is. As we watch Tony Franklin here, you know, that barefooted kicker, I would think they probably enjoy playing inside, don't they? They don't have to worry about the cold weather, the mud. They don't even have to worry about getting their foot sunburned. <laughs> and, of course, he will enjoy that next week because yeah. they go to the Superdome in New Orleans. That's why he's so happy. Look, he's counting there. He's telling all the guys how nice this is. And uh, that last score kind of made this crowd a little quiet, didn't it? It was a very noisy crowd prior to that touchdown pass. They've had 24 consecutive sellouts here. This beautiful facility. And, of course, this is the fifth year of this franchise. You see what he's doing there? He's, he's softening the ball up. You know, you, you use new balls each time for a 
for a kickoff and sometimes you get a brand new ball that hasn't been used so they squeeze it like that to make it a little softer and easier to kick especially if you're barefoot that's, that's important that's right Jesse Green and Will Lewis back as Franklin hits this one very short Lewis is on the fly at the 20-yard line and he's going to make it out to the 23 so Franklin didn't get that one very well but good coverage by Philadelphia anyway. And Lewis made a bad decision. We used to always have a rule that if the ball is kicked outside the numbers, you take it right up that sideline. They had a middle or right return, and he brought it all the way back into the middle and didn't gain a thing with it. What you mean by the numbers? The numbers on the field. The numbers on the field, right, the 10, 20, 30, 40. So he took it to the middle, and his forward progress just short of the 25. We still have four, 48 remaining in this third quarter. 14-13, Philadelphia leading, and this is going to be quite a game before it's all over. Jim Zorn, play action to Dan Dornick. Zorn, lots of time. Randy Logan almost had an interception. John Sawyer, the tight end, the intended receiver, but Logan had deployed himself very, very well. Logan played in the Pro Bowl last year, and he shows why on that particular play. What it was, it was a short out and up, as we'll see Sawyer... They play, they play fake to the left. Sawyer runs and out and then up the field. It didn't fool Randy Logan at all. He was right there with them step for step. Well, you've got all those other receivers. You wouldn't expect Sawyer to be down in that position. But Randy Logan did. Second and 10. There's that last drive. 15-yard touchdown pass. Tying it up. And then Franklin giving the Eagles a slim one-point lead. Dorn setting up the screen to Dornick. Oh, is he hit? Excellent tackle that time. Mike Lamaster. I'll tell you, that one didn't fool Lamaster. That, that pass is, is better against a zone defense, a screen pass. What you like is you like to see the defense work back to get deep, and then you set your screen, your lineman in front of the ball carrier where he can get turned up field. That time, Frank Lamaster was man-to-man -man on Dornick and he went right with them in the screen. They were telling us he's having a very quiet but a very successful year for this Philadelphia team. You haven't heard a lot about him, but you saw that for third down 15. Dornick a little shaken up after he took that shot from Lamaster. On a third and 15, Zorn. And he's going to be sacked. Jim Zorn spun around. Dennis Harrison, 68, was back there. Zorn up and running off in a hurry. I'll tell you, Harrison put that big right hand out there, caught Zorn's shoulder pad, and wasn't going to let go because this guy gets away from so many of these type of things. But watch that. Oh, it was the left hand, I mean. The left hand, he brought him down, and he had a clamp on that jersey that Jim Zorn wasn't going to get away that play. That's the fourth sack of the year for the man called Bigfoot as Herman Weaver, who had an eight-yard kick the last time, hit this one very, very well. That is a picturesque kick. Shira at the 40-yard line. Big block that time, and he's out to the 45. Making that block was Ray Phillips. He really threw a block back at the 45, his end of the field, and that gave Shira some running room to the 45 of Seattle. Art Kuhn eventually made the tackle, a 47-yard kick that time by Herman Weaver. Look next week, would you? And we have some good ones. You know that Atlanta and St. Louis will be a very interesting contest. If St. Louis didn't lose too much today, boy, what a tough loss for them. Dallas beating them 27 to 24. Atlanta and Los Angeles look like they'll still be tied for first in that NFC West. And this team, the Eagles, get to play the New Orleans Saints. Could be a dangerous game. They're a little concerned about that. They were talking about it yesterday. From the 45, first down, and... Good hole up the middle that time. That's Mike Hogan. And Hogan to the 34-yard line. You know, it's interesting. We'll see the play from ground level here that, that the Eagles started out trying to run to the outside. And they really didn't have any success. So they made a, a real good adjustment. They spread the defense out and started to hit the middle. And they're making big chunks in the inside of the Seahawk defense. Hogan led the Eagles in rushing in 76 and 77. In 78, he had 607 yards. That was a career high. He's a fine football player. Looks like Jaworski wants a different football. And that's what they're going to get. Now, what brings that all about? What, what's the problem with the ball in a situation like that? Usually stick them. If the last person that handles the ball had stick them on their hands or their jerseys, 
then the center is instructed don't snap a ball that has stick them on it. We and used to have a lot of that. Yeah, Oop. I was going to say you led the league in that, I think. Here's Giamona and Giamona inside the 30 and he's all the way to the 26 yard line. Tuliasa Sopo over to make the stop a pickup of eight yards on the play and they're going to be a couple of short of the first down. We we'll see it here again. It was that double tight end formation to the same side. They tried to get outside. Giamona makes a nice cut and comes back to the inside against the grain. Second down a long two to go for Philadelphia. The Eagles very impressive in this third quarter and again we'll be having a special report from the president of the United States. We'll be cutting to that live CBS News there to cover it. On the 26 going for the first down is Mike Hogan. He had it and you saw the charge that time by that offensive line of Philadelphia. What a charge by the center number 50 Guy Morris. He he took off and he went after Terry Beeson and they got a big push in that offensive line right up the middle again. Jaworski really a resourceful guy a guy who evidently has a high threshold of pain he started his 55th straight today and last week it looked like he wasn't going to start the rest of the year the way he hit suffered the concussion that's really durability and you can rely on a guy like that to answer the bell or as you say dance every dance dance every dance first down from the 21 Jaworski the time rifles the shot Carl Smith had it for a moment. What a pass though it's incomplete but did Ron Jaworski zip that thing in there they used to call him the rifle and he still is some kind of rifle but watch his throw he comes back here again it's time and I watch that dart that doesn't stay in the air very long I think Charlie Smith had it but the arm was caught back there by Kerry Justin had the back of his arm so he couldn't put both but both hands around it, both arms around. It. Minnesota now 30 to 14. You mentioned that arm of Jaworski. Jaworski said one thing about Dick Vermeil. He said he harnessed my energy. Used that strong arm in the right context, in the right places. Well, he used it in the right place, that one. Second down 10 from the 21. Carmichael and Smith to the bottom of the screen. Jaworski. They had two men in the same area. Smith, also Leroy Harris. Harris caught the ball. At the 11 yard line now that is very very close to a first down. No I think it's an incomplete pass Gary the official went up there and said that it's no good. Let's look at it again. This will be interesting to see what what happened on that play they did they did have two offensive men in the same area and let's watch linebacker number 55 Michael Jackson here. See he'll he'll start back now there's a second man coming in there. He really picked off his corner, Kerry Justin. It did hit the ground. Did you right, see that? It hit the ground. The officials were right on top of that. Boy, he really made it look like a catch. So it's now third down 10. Prep jumping in to the wing position. Third and 10, Jaworski. And Tanner for Smith and Justin came up and batted it down. They've been picking on this young man from Oregon State. And Justin came up that time and he looked like he wanted to go the other way with that football. I'll tell you he's an aggressive player. We remember earlier in the game on that short out he came up and went for the ball and it turned into a big play for Charles Smith. But here again he goes for the ball. He goes in front cuts in front and he makes a deflection. That's a heck of a play by Justin. I know it that that forces the field goal attempt here and that can be a big difference in this game. This will be a 38 yard attempt by. Welcome back to the Kingdom in Seattle. While you were away during the president's address, we had a 38-yard field goal by Tony Franklin. Here it is. We videotaped it while you were away. Franklin hit this one, and you can see he hit it extremely well. And that has given the Philadelphia Eagles a 17-13 lead as we start the fourth quarter. Second down 10 for Seattle. John Sawyer, the tight end, makes the catch at the 27-yard line. One thing that also developed while we were away, Roynell Young, hurt his arm he's out of the ball game right now and coming in replacing him has been Richard Blackmore at left cornerback. I think Roynell Young is coming right back into the game now they've been working on his shoulder on the sideline and just as you said that they were working on him he jumped up and ran on the field so there he is number 43. 
Young back in. Blackmore will stay in as they'll have five defensive backs on a third down and eight. Also three wide receivers for Seattle. 17-13. The Eagles with the lead. They've had to battle from behind in this game. Jim Zorn on the third down. Has time to throw. And it's intercepted. It's picked up and intercepted by Herman Edwards. There's a flag on the play, and I get the feeling we're going to have defensive pass interference. Yes, we are. It's going against Philadelphia, so defensive pass interference also brings about an automatic first down, so that will be a first down for the Seahawks. It looks like there was some pushing in there. Pass interference, number 27, defense, first down. That's Blackmore, the man we mentioned earlier. Let's look at it. I think if we can see him, it looked like he had both hands and pushed someone from behind in there. We did pick it up. Well, I think we just missed that. I think the push happened to Sam McCollum just before we picked it up. The injury to Young, by the way, was a stretched nerve in his left arm. And, of course, he has returned. But that first down on the pass interference sets it up at the 42-yard line. Zorn to Largent. What a combination. And he is loose at the 45, the 40. And held it hard there. Bernard Wilson over there along with Charlie Johnson. And Seattle is coming right back in this game. 18-yard pickup. I want to watch something here. Watch Steve Largent. You know, they say that he's not big. He doesn't have a lot of things. But the thing he has is quick feet. Those two feet work together. Look at that. As one moves, the other one's right there. Just watch his feet. That's the ingredient that Steve Largent has that separates him from average receivers. We had at the start of the show his 67-yard touchdown catch last week against Oakland, and again, his good feet made that play. He now has... Outstanding balance. He has six catches, John, for 101 yards. On a first down, Zorn. He hits Mark Bell, his tight end, and Bell has a first down. Philadelphia trying to reach in to come up with the deflection or maybe the interception, and Mark Bell instead came up with a catch. He's their fourth-round draft pick. He's a twin brother of Mike Bell, who plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know how that ball got in there. It was really uh, fine coverage by linebacker Jerry Robinson. He was right there. He reached for the ball, and it just went under his hand and got into Mark Bell. That third quarter, Philadelphia, as you look at that score, Houston 20 to 9. Philadelphia had the ball 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Seattle, 4 minutes and 48 seconds. The game started with Seattle with great ball control. First down now at the 27. In motion, John Sawyer. A give on it to the 20, 15, 10. First and goal at the 9. And this crowd explodes here. Randy Logan made the stop. Boy, was that wide open. 18 yards for Dornick. Dan Dornick exploded on that one, but see how it starts off as a sprint. They don't know whether Zorn is going to hand the ball to Dornick or if he's going to continue out and make a sprint pass out of it. They widened out a little because they want to contain Zorn, so therefore the, the run inside to the side of the sprint is there. That's the reason Sherman Smith has been so effective for this team, who oh, they he, miss. He was great at that. Who? First and goal just short of the nine. 17-13, Philadelphia the lead. Bell in motion. Dornick again. Five. Dornick's in for the touchdown. They found there what they wanted, and we'll see this from the end zone. See, he starts out sprinting. The defense starts to go with it. He cuts back against the grain that time and finds a hole inside on the other side of the center. And you said it very well. You have to respect Zorn so much that it gives number 33 a chance to operate. Point after attempt now. Herrera. It's a big point after. 1917. They need this, so if the Eagles come back with a field goal, the Eagles have jumped offside. Herrera. Makes it 20 to 17. I believe it will go against Philadelphia. The point will stand. Right. So Herrera had a free one there. He knew that, that if he didn't make it, he'd get another shot at it. He did make it. So that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Offside, number 22, defense. The point is good. Five yards on the kickoff. Wilson, the man that was offside. Let's look at this play again for the touchdown. You see here again the Eagles. The Eagles start to go to the right, then he cut back to the left. 
tonight a CBS News special report anchored by Dan Rather. This special report will focus on today's developments in which Iran has agreed to the release of the hostages if Khomeini's four conditions are met. You see the times, 10.30 Central, 11.30 Pacific. We have a 20 to 17 game. Seattle has taken the lead for the third time. Herrera to kick off. And again, they have everybody up front anticipating an onside kick. All the coaches on the sideline are yelling to their return team to spread out, to do this, to do that. They have them spread out all over the field worrying about an onside kick. He's kicking from the 40 because they assessed that offside penalty on the point after. Louis Giamona. And he is hammered at the 15-yard line. And this crowd is electrified right now. As at the 15, that's where Philadelphia will have it. The Seahawks looking for their first win at home this year. A 14-yard return. Tim Walker, the man on the stop. And there's that last drive, a very impressive drive. You know, the thing that doesn't show there, though, was that third down interference penalty. That was the play that really kept the drive alive. So Ron Jaworski, who's had to battle uphill all afternoon long. Look at that. Philadelphia's won its last two games with fourth quarter scores. They trailed in four of their six victories in the first period, which also occurred today. From the 15-yard line, the Eagle down by three. 11 and a half minutes left in the game. Harris trying to go somewhere, and do you think maybe Seattle's fired up right now? I think they're fired up, and I think they've figured that what the Eagles are trying to do now is to spread out with those two tight ends on the same side and, and run inside or up the middle so they aren't spreading out anymore. Now maybe Philadelphia later anyway will be able to get outside to the side of the two tight ends. Denver has now scored. They trail by four. Beeson and Hardy on that last stop. Gain of two. Second down and eight for Philadelphia. The Eagles are the best record in football. Seven and one. There's Crefley again, jumping into the wing position. Jaworski on a second and eight. Crefley, and he has the first down. Check that, that's Spagnola. John Spagnola has the first down catch as he brings it out across the 25 to the 28. Keith Butler, Joe Norman in on the tackle. Well, Crefley and Spagnola are lining up on the same side, and they're running patterns off of each other one will go deep the other one comes underneath and they reverse that thing and they have some things going over there that I'm sure will be an integral part of this game as it as it continues late into the fourth quarter one cuts outside the other cuts inside on many of those pass patterns right and one short and one deep first down from the 28 yard line Harry Harrington Harrington goes to the 35 yard line John Harris over to make the stop Hey, this Harrington, he is running now with a lot more confidence than we saw him earlier in the year. Oakland leads Miami, fourth quarter. And Minnesota still continues to lead the Redskins. Minnesota will play Detroit next week. They've had trouble scoring, but they look like they have something going today. Now Philadelphia is starting going again to their outside running. Just short of the 35, second down three for the Eagles. Two receivers split to the top. That's Smith and Carmichael. Give to Harris. Harris to the 39, and that'll be a first down. So the Eagles now relentlessly, very methodically, moving the football. Tui Asusopo making the stop, number 74. A lot of these players on this field played for Dick Vermeil at UCLA. Tui Asusopo, along with Kuhn, the center, Jerry Robinson, Efren Herrera. A lot of players from UCLA playing important roles in this game. First down at the 39. Smith, Carmichael at the bottom of the screen. Again, Crefley is lined up on a wing at the top of the screen. Jaworski, look out. Butler. Keith Butler blitzing from the linebacking spot. Drops him back at the 30-yard line. He's what timing that was. You know, <clears throat> the Eagles had had their backs going to the right side, so there was no one to pick up that backside linebacker. See, they only had one back in the backfield, Harris. Now, when he goes right, they don't have a man to pick up the linebacker from the offside if, in fact, he does come. Loss of eight yards. 
There's Butler. He comes out now as Norman will come in and replace him on this passing, apparent passing situation. Smith and Carmichael again to the bottom of the screen. You see Crepley. He's lined up in the backfield. He may shift and does. A lot of new sets in this game for Philadelphia. Jaworski. A lot of time. Smith. Charlie Smith, the first down catch at the 48-yard line of Seattle. Dave Brown defending on the play. Boy, he got those 18 yards back in a hurry. I'll tell you, Ron Jaworski to something there. You know, anyone can pass on the first down and the second down, but when you're third down and you need 18 yards to go, that takes a special type of thing. That's where the real quarterbacks shine in those situations. And I think that's where a real team does. You know, Dick Vermeil talks a lot about the dedication and the and the sacrifice that a team has to have and what an eagle is. This is when it shows up. This is when it's tested. Look at that. Minnesota's added three more points. Smith now has four catches, 103 yards. That last one for 22. Here's Giamona. Giamona with a big move to the 45-40. Very fine open field work that time by Giamona. Tuliasa Sopo over to make the stop. They're going to be three yards short of the first down. Watch the move that Giamona makes on Terry Beeson here. Beeson has them all lined up. See, it's a screen pass. He starts out here. He dumps the ball to Giamona. He turns up field. But watch Beeson right there. He's ready. He thinks he has them zeroed in. Giamona gives him a little move and then upfield for a seven yard gain. Louis doing a good job. There's Chuck Bettneri. Ball pro center and linebacker looking on. Second down, three. Crefley again, jumping into the wing spot. Six and a half minutes left in this game. A three-point lead for Seattle. Leroy Harris. And Harris has the first down to the 35. Hardy making the stop there for Seattle. Boy, this is a very fine drive right now that the Eagles are putting together. One thing, when, when they do get their running going, or, or when they can run, their, their offense is much more proficient. Uh, early early in the game in the first half they were having trouble with the running game they just couldn't get anything going running wise and now they can and they're a different offensive team you look at the top of the kingdom we have an eagle player shaking up we'll be back in just a moment Los Angeles well, it looked like they might have an easy time of it but the Saints have been scoring some points that's in the fourth quarter 38 24 we have a three point game here Petey Payro, the offensive guard for Philadelphia, has been shaken up. Ron Baker has come in. Jaworski in this game, John, has hit 15 of 25 for 225 yards, still finding himself down by three points. One of the reasons his counterpart, Zorn, is 18 of 29 for 216. Both of these quarterbacks have played remarkably well. I'll tell you, there's something, and that's really what the National Football is all about, the, the quarterbacks and throwing the ball. There's... One, we see Jim Zorn there. We just saw Ron Jaworski. And that's why I was always so interested in protecting the quarterbacks, even if it took a little extra in the rules, because they are so important. There's Payroll coming out, the second-year man from Northwest Louisiana. He's really been a fine football player for this Philadelphia team. He sure has, and you hate to see that. It seems like we're seeing more and more offensive linemen injured now. And why? I would, I would think that a lot of it has to do with the artificial surface because a lot of times they're getting their feet caught and planted in the carpet and then the twisting of it is putting extra pressure on their joints and knee and the ankle. Philadelphia with a first down at the 35 yard line. Grefley jumping into the wing spot again. 20 to 17. Seattle with the lead. Jaworski a little fake then a pitch to Smith and Smith to the 30 yard line. Keith Butler over there. Butler making a couple of bone jarring stops on this particular series. And so it's going to bring up second down and five yards to go. There's Smith. Smith with another grab. Five and a half minutes left in this contest. This has taken a lot of time, this drive. It has. And the one thing that's impressive about Ron Jaworski and the Eagles is he really moves it around. It's Harold Carmichael. It's Charles Smith. It's Keith Prefley. It's John Spagnola. It's Jim Mona, his running backs. He gives it off to everyone. That was a fifth catch by Smith. Here's Harrington. Harrington has the corner, and Harrington has the first down. Robert Hardy making the stop. Forward progress close to the 22-yard line, and Harrington, Wayne Moore, moved to the halfback spot due to the injury to Wilbert Montgomery. Did you see Hardy on that? Welcome his friend. They're both from the same school, Jackson State. 
Uh, Jerry Sizemore did a nice job of leading here. He got one block, kept his feet, went after another one, and that was the, the block that, that sprung Perry Harrington. They call Harrington a fullback with a future. They may have to say a halfback with a future. As he's playing very well here. Just the running back. <laughs> first down now from the 22. On the first down, Jaworski to Harris. Harris to the 20. And they have quite a collision there. Keith Simpson, who is a punishing tackler, and Harris, helmet to helmet, at about the 20-yard line. That's where they're going to mark it, at the 20. A gain of two, second down and eight. And with time showing 425 left. This drive started with 1131 left. They've used over seven minutes on this drive. Right, and with the score of the Seahawks 20, the Eagles 17, I'm sure that the Eagles are thinking touchdown here. They don't want to go for the field goal and the tie. They're thinking score and go ahead, but use up time. We have a final score we'll give you in just a moment. Second down and eight. Jaworski, good protection. Spagnola. Coverage that time by Harris, who's limping noticeably as he went back there with Spagnola, the former Yale performer. The final we have is Houston defeated Denver 20 to 16. And the difference coming way back early when Campbell had a nine yard touchdown run. Denver came back to score on an eight yard touchdown pass. We hope Petey Peyro is okay. They're, they're wheeling them off the field now and into the dressing room. Another final. Oakland has defeated Miami 16 to 10. There's Peyro. There we go. Third down. Eight yards. This time, Crepley jumps into the left wing position. This crowd is alive here at the Kingdom. Jaworski. On the third down, Crepley, what a catch at the five-yard line. Dave Brown defending on the play, and Crepley now has it first and goal. And after dropping one earlier, what a job this big tight end has done. Well, you hate to use the cliche, big play, but that was the difference between a field goal and a possible score here. Now, Jaworski is getting good pass protection. He really did. They used the two tight ends. And again, that was Spagnola going off the pattern of Crepley. Crepley was in there for the big first down. The terror yeah. looks very stoic there, but is he churning inside oh, right now? He is. He's saying if we just could have stopped and then made him try that field goal, now they're in position to go for the score again. Crepley with four catches, 61 yards. Somebody threw something on the field. Here comes Harris straight ahead. They may have stopped this play before it started. Looked like a ball or something had been thrown from the upper deck and landed right around the line of scrimmage. There's that final we gave you earlier, Oakland over Miami. No play! That's right. They called a play dead because of the debris that landed on the field. So it'll be first and goal at the five after this discussion. <laughs> Is he Stan Walters? It's like he's losing his jersey there. Yeah. You'll probably get fined for that. You have to, you know, the NFL has a dress code now, and one of the rules of that dress code is that your shirt tail has to be tucked in. Fans, our fans aren't doing that. The ball thrown on the field completely disrupted the play. The play will go over. First down, goal to goal. Yeah, Stan Walters was saying our fans didn't do it, penalize them. So forget that last play. It's first and goal at the five. 332 left. What kind of ball did they throw on well, the field? Well, it looked like a rubber ball of some kind. It okay. bounced about six, seven feet in the air when it hit the surface. Was it incomplete? <laughs> looked like one of those shots they hit in the World Series. So Jaworski now, he wants to be absolutely sure he knows what's going on. There's Walters. Hey, Stan, get that shirt tail in. <laughs> well, see, he has to tie that underneath. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he can get it in now, do you? No, no, no. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, he's getting it in. Yeah, because he knows those rules. He's played a long time. He knows what the rules are. Very important. Jersey tucked in. That's called discipline. It's more important how you block. And here comes an important play. First and goal at the five. As you can see, just inside the five. Harris, the only running back. Smith, Carmichael at the bottom, flanked out. Here comes Harris, has a block from Sizemore, but it doesn't get anything. He was buried that time, in particular by Terry Beeson, the fourth-year man from Kansas. 
no gain whatsoever on that one. Terry Beeson had missed Giamona earlier, and he says, I'm not going to miss Leroy Harris on this one. They only had one blocker out there, Sizemore, and a lot of blue jerseys in the Seattle Seahawks. Time running now with 3.07 left in this game. There's Beeson out of Coffeyville, Kansas. And here's where the Philadelphia Eagles could use Wilbert Montgomery. Second and goal. Just inside the five. A three-point lead for Seattle. 20 to 17. 249. The clock moving. Play action by Jaworski. Camfield. And he's in for the touchdown. Billy Camfield. The Eagles did a nice job of setting that up. They had been using the two tight end formation and trying to get outside. That time they went. They went three tight ends and a wing. They had everyone in tight to bring the Seattle defense in tight. Then they faked the run. They got the running back out into the flat, into the end zone for a touchdown. That was a good call, and it was set up nice for the pass to Billy Campfield. Billy Campfield playing a lot here today and doing a very, very fine job. He scored earlier on a one-yard touchdown run. And now Franklin the point after. Shira to hold. 22-19, and the kick makes it 23-19. So that was a big point after, as far as the field goal was concerned. A four-point lead now for the Eagles. As Tony Franklin just about ready to tee it up. Look at that shot there, that foot. You know, we were talking about the uniform code and the jerseys being tucked in. Every player also has to wear a sock. Now, when Tony Franklin first started, that sock was way down by his ankle, and each week it seems to inch up and inch up and inch up, and in another few weeks it'll be up underneath his pants. Boy, he's going to blame you next week when they make him lengthen it. I know it. <laughs> Here's Al Hunter. Hunter has some blocking. 20. Hunter is going to make it just about to the 25-yard line. There's a lot of time left in this game when you have Jim Zorn. 2.31 to be exact. Thomas Brown making the tackle, the rookie from Baylor. They're going to mark it at the 24. And there is Minnesota adding to their advantage, 36 to 14. That's an impressive game by the Vikings, who've lost four of their last five. And shaken up for Philadelphia on the far side, Ray Phillips. And he's going to get off on his own. You know, that last drive by the Eagles was sure impressive because they had to do it. And Again, you know, you come out early in the game, you're fired up and you're doing a lot of things in the first half. Then when you get down in that fourth quarter and you're behind, you have to drive the ball down the field. And when the team does that, that's the thing that separates the average teams from the championship teams. That drive, eight minutes and 48 seconds. 15 plays. And now Seattle down by four, 24 to 20. The stats on Jim Zorn. Seattle in this game has all three of their timeouts remaining. Zorn. And he tried to hit larger. That's a tough pass, I would think, for a left-hander running right and trying to throw. But he has thrown so much from the run that he's used to it. I'm sure that he's been doing that all his life. And that's the thing that makes him the threat that he is. He can run left and throw right, run right and throw left run left and throw left and all the combinations of the above. I think you left one out there somewhere. Run up the middle and throw back. <laughs> anyway, it's second down 10. As Zorn, as good as anybody in this league playing catch up football. This time three wide receivers. Rabel, the top of the screen, in the slot, McCullough, and closest to the near sideline, Steve Largent. Left-handed snapper Yarno to the left-handed passer Zorn, and he's hit by Claude Humphrey. Humphrey and also Carl Hairston. He kind of was sandwiched that time and dropped back to the 15-yard line. Claude Humphrey ran right by Steve August. He was he was lined up on August. He, he took an outside move and went right by him. As we see up there in the top, you see he started fake like he was going inside. And see him here, he comes right by him, right, right, right in on Jim Zorn, who didn't have a chance. And as you say, he was sandwiched. They didn't even huddle up. They're ready to go again. Well, third down, that's dangerous because they have third and a bunch. They need to take time and, and get a good play. Third and 18, and they're now stopping the clock with a two-minute warning. So the two-minute warning is here as a third and 18 coming up now. 
for Seattle. They trail in this game by four, 24 to 20. Seattle still has their three timeouts remaining, but only two minutes left. As this is an important play, obviously, third down and 18. You know, the important play was that second down play and the pass rush from Claude Humphrey and Carl Harrison. Three wide receivers are in. One of them, McCollum, now goes in motion. Jim Zord on the third and 18, rolling out. He's got a block. And intended for McCollum and almost accepted. Blackmore, 27, had position on the ball, and now it's fourth down. Well, do you go for it on fourth down, or are you going to kick it here? No, I think they're going to kick it because they do have two timeouts left. And what, well, excuse me, they have all three of their timeouts left. What they think is they can punt, play defense, take the timeout, and get the ball again. Again. They almost had the Eagles intercepted that pass, then, then they, they would have run the clock out. Everything else would have been academic. The Eagles weren't sure what they're going to do. They got their defense in there, their punt return team in very late. And Weaver's going to fake it. Up the field, Joe Norman broke it up. Herman Weaver, who had attempted one pass earlier this year, had the ball en route to Joe Norman, the linebacker, an eligible receiver on that particular play because he was lined up in the backfield. And they almost came away with it. It would have been it looked like short of the first down had he caught the ball. It probably would have been. I kind of like my idea a little better <laughs> where they they punt the ball, use their timeouts and try and get it again because this he's throwing out of his end zone. He only only has one play. It's all or none. If he hits this, he doesn't have a first down, but he would have a chance. If he doesn't, now the Eagles take the ball, run out the clock. Randy Logan doing a good job on that play. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following football, except on the West Coast, which will be shown at its normal time. But a very busy day for CBS News. So after the fourth down gamble on the punt, the pass by Weaver not finding the mark. Philadelphia with the ball, and they're going to take all the time in the world. Of course, as we mentioned, three timeouts remaining for Seattle, and they use their first one. Terry Beeson with the tackle. That's the only chance that the Seahawks have now. They do have their three timeouts as a group, so they'll take one after every running play. Then they'll get the ball back with ball or go for it on fourth down. I imagine Dick Vermeil feels he's seen everything here today as far as this Seattle team is concerned. Our executive producer, Charles Milton III, back in New York. Our producer, David Fox, boy, he really showed us a good time last night, didn't he? Well, he sure did. He fell asleep, but we well, had a good time. And the only guy in the National Football League who can make egg creams, Robert Fishman. The only one that knows what they are. <laughs> and our associate producer, Michael Burks, and our manager of the field operations, got him up from the L.A. area, Brooks Graham. Great job, man. So it's second down seven with a minute 43 left for Philadelphia. Boy, Philadelphia had to... Just great by Chicago last week. They've had a battle on their hands this week. There still looks like they may be 8-1. Boy, Vermeil, I'm sure, feels it's getting tougher every week. Right, and he'll be happy to leave this kingdom in Seattle this evening. There's Mike Hogan in the game. Hogan inside the 10, possibly to the 9. Seattle uses their second timeout. They have one remaining. You know, this will mean that Seattle still is looking for their first win at home. But you stop and think about who they played at home, and then you realize how difficult their schedule is. And Minnesota continuing to just mount more of an advantage over Washington. Okay, that's going to be a good game, Detroit and Minnesota next week. There's Jack Patera, his fifth year, a man who was in Minnesota for so many years, designer of that purple people leader defense. And let's look at this score. There's Atlanta over Buffalo. We're going to look at all the finals that we have. Pittsburgh beating Green Bay. The Packers are playing very tough what football. A Tampa Bay over the Giants. Giants have lost eight in a row. San Francisco, well, after winning their first three, they've run on some hard times. A lot of injuries. And Kansas City with their four-game winning streak snapped by Baltimore. Burt Jones was warm and hot today. San Diego beating Cincinnati. Dan Fouts was tough today. He's always tough. Third down three. 
Seattle with one timeout remaining. They'd like to hold them here. Here's Harris, and I don't know. I don't believe he got it. Seattle now uses a timeout, their last timeout, and it comes to a fourth down now for Philadelphia. This is an interesting thing here, Gary. See now, if if Philadelphia kicks a field goal here, then Seattle will get the ball again, and they can tie with a touchdown. But they don't have any timeouts left. If 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 Philadelphia elects to go for it, then then they still need a touchdown. Seattle does, but a touchdown would beat them. So I'm sure that, that they'll kick the field goal. That's what they've done. Tony Franklin's coming out. There's Jack Patera. He's talking things over to Zorn, and Zorn hasn't given up with a minute 34 left in this game. I'm sure that no one has given up. But you know, as you look at this second half, one of the big plays was that sack by Claude Humphrey and Carl Harrison because that put Seattle in that in that second and long and third and long. Had they not done that, Seattle could still have the ball. Here is Tony Franklin, and this will be an attempt of 25 yards. And Franklin, another one of those rockets of his, and it's now a 27 to 20 game. And you just set the stage a moment ago, a touchdown and a point after, and we would be all even. And Jim Zorn has already mapped his strategy. The Philadelphia defense once again is going to have to come up and do a job. And this reminder, the 60 minutes again will be seen in its entirety immediately following football except on the West Coast and that will be shown at its normal time. There's Jack Patera. He still thinks they've got a shot at it. Well you know and he's happy that he had those three timeouts as a bunch. We always talk about that how important they are and how you don't want to use them early. Had he only had two timeouts then Philadelphia would have been able to run a play without the Seahawks taking a timeout. The fact that they had three of them in one package they could do what they just did and set the stage that we have now where a touchdown can tie the game. The only thing is with Philadelphia I mean with Seattle not having any timeouts all their passes will have to be directed to the sideline. Franklin who's kicked two field goals 38 just now a moment ago a 25 yarder will kick off from the 35. He had some last minute strategy from Lynn Stiles the special teams coach. And what that strategy probably is that he doesn't want to kick a long high deep kick. He would probably kick a line drive because the first time the ball is touched is when the clock starts. So I would expect he'll kick a line drive kick here. A minute and a half left. Well, he hits it fairly high. Will Lewis at the five. 15, 20, 25. This is what Seattle needed as they bring it out to the 31. A good return, their best return of the day. And Seattle now from the 31 yard line with one minute and 23 seconds left. Getting up slowly for the Eagles is Giamona. He was in on that stop. Giamona last year won the Sledgehammer Award as the top special teams player. Now he's running from the halfback spot as well. That was a 29 yard return. They've marked it at the 32. Here we go. Well, hold, hold your seats here. Three wide receivers. McCutcheon's in the backfield now. He's back there with Dan Dornick. Zorn and his team down by seven points. Zorn. And here is Rabel out of bounds. That'll be a first down, and they have the ball at the 47 yard line. And Zorn, like a doctor now, a surgeon, starting to just kind of whittle away. That's going to bring it to the 47 and now with a minute 17 left in the game. That didn't take very long did it. No it didn't. A minute 17 is is a long time if you can keep the ball on the sidelines as you're doing here. See the Eagles are in a four man rush. They they run a stunt. Zorn really didn't have time to throw. He threw it off balance but but they worked so well together that he got a completion. That was Ken Clark that came up the middle that hurried that pass up. First down now from the 47. Zorn back again. Largent almost had it. Herman Edwards defending on the play, and that was very, very close to being completed. And we have a final here, Minnesota over Washington, 39 to 14, and we welcome the viewers of that game to our game here with a minute 13 left. This is a pass play intended for Steve Largent. Watch this. The coverage on this is short and deep. See, they're keeping one man underneath. You see, to 
for that out or for that sideline thing. He has a defender in behind him for the out and up. There's our score. And with no timeouts remaining, Seattle is trying to pull this game out. They have a second down 10 from their own 47-yard line. A minute 13 left in the game. A touchdown on the point after would send this game into overtime. And Jim Zorn is trying to do just that. Zorn back on the second down 10. Stepping up. And the catch is made by Jesse Green. They say he's out of bounds. I don't know about that one. Now the rule is if the receiver is up in the air and he's hit by a defender and the impetus is caused him to go out of bounds that's a legal catch we'll be able to see this again here it's very close now if his feet are in the air and he gets knocked out of bounds I would say that that was a legal catch but well we have a flag now back at the 44 yard line which we just spotted there's a fourth quarter score. The Rams leading the Saints 45 24. Jerry Mark Bright's going to step off some yardage against Seattle. That's Let's a listen great to drive this one. stopper. Probably holding. Holding number 76 offense. Second down. So that hurts. And of course, we'll remind you again Seattle does not have any timeouts left. And number 76 is Steve August, and he has his hands full over there with Claude Humphrey. Humphrey a couple of times in this game has sacked Jim Zorn. He came in here with five for the year. So now that, it's second and 20. I think that was one of the big plays of the game when he sacked Jim Zorn the last time the Seahawks had the ball. Zorn 19 of 33 for 231 yards. Zorn the play action rolling around looking for somebody and he has dropped Carl Hairston with a big tackle. Hairston drops him all the way back to the 22 and with a minute one left. There's just nothing developed on the play. That looked very similar to a play we watched on film this past week against Oakland where he rolled left and hit Largent for a 67-yard touchdown pass. On an out and up. There's your time remaining. It's third down now. 35 yards to go. The Seahawks headed the wrong direction. Zorn gets rid of it somehow, but it's short intended for McCollum. As again, it was Carl Hairston in the backfield. Hairston and Humphrey from both wing positions have really been giving Zorn fits. There yeah, you see. Have. And that's when you need it. You know, you need the pass rush in this thing. If you're on defense, you need the pass protection if you're on offense. I think that's the most important part of football today is the offensive line. You've said many times, John, that's where you start building your franchise. Fourth down, 35. 43 seconds left in this game, and Zorn needs close to a miracle right now. McCullough, Largent, split out. Also, Jesse Green. Zorn, his last ditch effort. And down the field to McCullum, but he's not going to have enough. He wanted to make a move. He could not. They get yardage out to the 41, but they're considerably short of the first down, and Philadelphia will take over with 33 seconds left. And the Eagles know one thing, John, they have been in a battle. They have, and they hung in there because they started out that first half, and they didn't have much go right at all, but they just kept working. They got some things going on offense. They started to get pressure on defense, and, and they pulled it out, and I think that's the, the sign of this Eagle team. And uh, three times uh, they came from behind in this uh, game. You know, on that last play, Carl Harrison got hurt, and he limped off the field, and he's on the sideline now with a group of people around him, and we'll hope that he's okay. And so with no timeouts left, the Eagles now are just going to, they snapped it once, and the time will tick away, and that's going to do it. But Philadelphia with an 8 and one record, that's Harrison, the man you just mentioned a while ago. Uh, he's so important in this defense. He's all over the field, and uh, uh, we just hope that he's okay. Earlier, payroll went off with an injury, and so Philadelphia's record now moves to eight and one. Seattle is four and five, as the Eagles have won their fifth in a row, matching their victory string of last year when they made it to the playoffs. The best record in the National Football League, as still Seattle's looking for that first win at home. They are, but they've played a lot of tough teams at home, and I'm sure that's what Jack Patera is thinking. He's the schedule. They have the toughest schedule in the National Football League. Thank you, John. And for John Madden, I'm Gary Bender. The final here, Philadelphia 27, Seattle 20. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York.
worried about that down there.